It's the Great American Football Classic on AM 800 to KREI, game number two of the afternoon. Farmington Knights and the Sykes and the Bulldogs as a Farmington wants that second win. Sykes are coming in at 3-0, and ranked sixth in the class four, and we're just a couple of minutes away from the opening kickoff. Twelve minutes has been put up on the clock, and they've got um, a moment of silence going on down on the field right now with uh, looks like some Marines out there at midfield on that uh, Rams head at the 50-yard line, and now here come the captains to the 50 for the coin toss. So we're just about ready to go for this thing. Farmington's had to wait a week. They last played last Saturday against Jackson. So they get the kind of normal day's rest. The schedule a little bit lopsided there, but they get uh, the normal week-long rest before today's game against Sykeston. And I think both teams needed that extra day to prepare so they wouldn't have to play on Friday night for this big matchup. Oh, absolutely. And you heard Coach Gibbs in the pregame. Uh, he's you know, he's not taking farms to lightly. The record might be one and two, but he knows what kind of a team this is and what they have there. And, uh, you know, they're not going to take Farmson lightly in Farmson. They got a great opportunity today. You know, that Sykeston offense runs through Kylan Gross, and he's a heck of a player, explosive player. If they can contain him, though, you know, they're going to give them a chance, themselves a chance to be uh, to win this game. Dunlap, Bame, and Ryder Garrett are the captains at midfield. Garrett sporting that New Jersey, number 68. He'll be starting at left tackle today for Farmington. He uh, throws in the number 44 jersey and takes over at number 68. And the uh, left tackle, left side of that offensive line. So those are the captains. They're out there for the coin toss right now. But, uh, you know, it's such an exciting feeling to be able to play in this dome. A -a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You hope it's not a -a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Hopefully you can get to the dome and play in the championship game. But, you know, the the fact of the matter is for a lot of these kids on all eight of these teams that are playing today, this might be the only chance they get to play here. Yeah, sure enough, and you know, Farmington got close there last year. You know, made it to the semifinals, but like you said, no, no guarantees in high school football. You know, and what a what a great opportunity, like you said. And I think it's going to be a fun matchup, and I'm excited to see what happens. I think this is the second year for the Great American Football Classic here at the Edward Jones Dome, and it's a pretty cool thing that they're doing, allowing eight different teams each year to come up here and play. Some of the teams are uh, repeats from last year that they invited back, but for Farmington and Sykes, and this is their first year doing it. Yeah, and I think the reason is because you got two really strong programs coming in, Sykes and Bulldogs. They were in the state semifinals back-to-back years, a couple years back. Farmington obviously building their program up, made to the state semifinals last year, and they just know, hey, it's an interconference rival, a district rival. Why not bring these two teams up there and uh, let everybody see what they're all about? Yeah, and I think they wanted to expand it a little bit, get some of those teams south of St. Louis. They look at the CMO North and how strong of a conference that is. Why not get two powerhouses like Farmington and Sykeson up here and see what they can do? So now it's going to be Farmington kicking off to the Sykeston Bulldogs as we're about to get this thing underway. The opening kickoff is brought to you by American Family Insurance Agent Bill Bess and Park Kills, committed to making the big play for their customers. Austin Dussold will be kicking off from the 40-yard line. Farmington working right to left as you look on from press row way up here perched atop the Edward Jones Dome. By the way, we're on web TV this afternoon. Jack Sadler is the cameraman, and you can view the game at mimoinfo.com under KREI Web TV. With that being said, the ball was placed at the 40-yard line, and we're ready to get this thing started couple of special teams miscues last year to really start the game off in Jackson. Let's hope Farmington got them straightened out. They need a solid performance from their special teams today. Spencer Clark is their normal kick returner. Here is the kickoff. It's an end over end kick and it's fielded back at the 15 yard line. Returner is going to take it straight up the middle. Makes a man miss and cuts it to the 35 and he's at the sideline. Throwing his feet to the 50 to the 40. This game starting with a bang as Sykes then takes it all the way on the kickoff return for a touchdown. It's Marquez Newman returning that one 85 yards for a score. Well, what else can you say there, Glenn? Talked about uh, special teams miscues right there, and, uh, boy, that kid just made some plays. and uh, Not the start farm that was wanting to get off to. Well, Luke, as soon as you mentioned it, uh, special teams miscue, it's almost like you threw the jinx on him. 85 yards the other way for Marquez Newman on the kickoff return, and, It wasn't like he had a big hole to run through. He had to make something happen on that kickoff return, but he sure did it. 85 yards to Pater. Just like that, Sykeson's on top six to nothing. Boy, and I tell you what, at Farmington, they're just going to have to shake this one off. I mean, that kind of thing happens from time to time. There's a whole game left, so Farmington's just got to get back on the horse now. Dustin Oaks is the kicker. It's Spencer Clark to hold for the Sykeson Bulldogs. They're going to try to go up seven nothing. Just 13 seconds into this ball game from the Edward Jones Dome. The snap is there. The hold is there, but the kick is up and off the upright, left upright, no good. Six to nothing. So 
Farmington catches a break there, but they give up the 85-yard kickoff return on the opening kickoff, and it's a six-zip lead for Sykeston just 13 seconds into it. We'll step away for 30 seconds. You're listening to High School Football on AM800 KREI. Mineral Area College, your next step to success. The opportunity is right here. You can have it all for less. You can be what you want to be. So come on, take that first step. Mineral Area College, your next step. No, not the start that Farmington was looking for. Down six to nothing with 11:47 left to go in the first quarter. The opening kickoff has returned 85 yards for a touchdown by Marquez Newman, and Sykeston is up by a score early on. And now Farmington special teams has a chance to answer back with a kickoff return of their own, at least get in good field position to start this offense the right way. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Sykeston came out here with a little trick or maybe a little onside kick or squib. Farmington's got to be ready for something though. It's going to be Dustin Oaks to kick it deep. Evan Donovan's back to return. He's waiting for it at the seven-yard line. And here is a little bit of trickeration. It is a squib kick. You called it Luke Butt covered up by Farmington right at about the 47-yard line. And Farmington will get good field position. I believe that was Trey Amston falling on that one for the Knights. Hey, great job there by Trey to get fall on that ball. Like I said, sometimes whenever you kind of got a team on the, on the back of their heels there, you might come out and you do something like that. Starting lineups are brought to you by Midwest Convenient Care, and we'll start with the quarterback, Justin Bame. Thrown for 252 yards this year, three touchdowns and three interceptions. He'll work from the shotgun. We'll get you his offensive line in just a bit, but Farmington's going to go four wide, trips to the left, and one receiver outright. Colton Coulter is the back in the backfield. He wears number 28 on his back. Again, Farmington working right to left as you look on from press row. They'll start it at the 47-yard line, their own 47. There's a shotgun snap and a quick handoff. Coulter, and he's roped up in the backfield. He was going nowhere. It was Bradger on the tackle. And first play from scrimmage for Farmington. They go backwards. Tell you what, what an explosive defensive line. This Sykeston defense is no joke. Farmington is going to have to be be ready. Ryder Garrett, they're playing left tackle, is going to really have to step it up. Coulter loses six yards on the carry. They're back at the 41-yard line, second down and 16. Shotgun formation again. There's the snap. It's Bain faking the handoff, and he takes it left side, and he's up across the 50 to about the 49-yard line of Sykeson. Nice little play fake, sold it nicely, so did the running back, and Bain gets positive yardage, gets all that lost yardage back, plus a few yards, setting up third down and five. Good play for Farmington. That was about an 11-yard run there for Justin Bain, and now on third down and five. Twins to the right, twins to the left. There's the shotgun snap again. They'll fake it to Coulter again. This time the Sykeson defense is ready for it, and they back him up, and he's going to lose the yardage again. About a five- to six-yard loss on that one. Now they give him forward progress for a loss of three on that one. By the time he was driven back, he was behind the 45-yard line, but they take him down at the 49, fourth down coming up. Three and out for the Farmers and offense there, and they went with the ground game, and Coach Vaughn said, we're going to have to get something, something going on the ground if we want to open up that passing game. So Dussold is on to punt it away, and Sykeston back to return. It's Marquez Newman. He's already been dangerous today, but this one's going to bounce out of bounds. Nice coffin corner punt there by Austin Dussold as it bounces out at about the 11-yard line. Sykeston's offense takes the field. Let me get you the rest of that Farmington starting lineup, though. Receivers Evan Donovan, Calvin Lynch, Devin Nagel, and Jared Dunlap. Offensive line, Ryder Garrett, Austin Dussold, Zach Grieve, Tyler Whitfade. Uh, there was one more tackle in there, I forgot. It was Garrett. Ryder Garrett. Yeah. So here comes the offense. First Sykeston. First time we've seen them on the field today. Starting at the 11-yard line. Austin Herbst also went left guard today, and Austin DeSold was at right tackle. All right. Now for Sykeston. Here is Gross. Fakes the handoff and then takes 11. Has a big hole, and he's going to show some speed. Afterburners are turned on. as it across the 30 to the 35 and then broke through for about four extra yards to about the 39-yard line. Great run for Kylan Gross on the first play from scrimmage for Sykeston. No, nothing surprising there. We knew Kylan Gross was explosive and a, basically a dual threat back there. You know, he passes a little bit, but Farmington has got to recognize. you got to keep an eye on that kid. 28-yard run by the quarterback, Kylan Gross. We'll get you Sykeston starting offensive lineup. 
here in just a bit. Kylan Gross, he's a dual threat. 188 yards passing, 425 yards rushing on the air, five rushing touchdowns, one passing touchdown to go along with one interception for Sykes. Ball spotted at the 39-yard line. Kylan Gross, the quarterback, Reese Porter and Pat Gross, two running backs in this offense. Chris Ward is the fullback, Chris Word, I should say. From the shotgun now, it's Gross, and he's going to pass. This is his first pass of the game, has his man out. On the other side, it's Bratcher. Bratcher on the far side of the field is going to get six to seven yards up near midfield, about the 47-yard line. Give Bratcher seven on the catch. Nice throw by Gross. There's a quick screen to his wide receiver, and those are probably going to be the types of plays we're going to see out of this Sykes and passing game. I don't see him going downfield a whole lot. Markeith Bratcher at one wide receiver spot. The other receiver is Spencer Clark. And now second down and three for Sykes. And along that offensive line, sophomore Tanner Henson at left tackle. Michael Burden at left guard. Taylor Barnes, the center. Austin McMillan at right guard. And Blake Flanagan, team captain, is at right tackle. Man comes in motion. Gross takes the snap and hands it off to the tailback in the backfield. Ball might have came out up there. Sykeson says they've fallen on it as he was hit immediately for no gain on the play. Looks like it will stay Sykeson football. Did I? Yeah, I think that was that word on the carry there. Yeah, word, and he went nowhere. Nowhere. Uh, lost the football, I think, going through the pile and had to kind of turn back to fall on it real quick. But uh, nice pursuit there by the Farmington defense. So it's third down, three yards to go. Farmington's D trying to make a stop down. Six to nothing in the first quarter. Nine minutes left to play in the opening frame. From the shotgun again, it's Kylan Gross. Man comes in motion, and they'll fake it to the motion. Man, Gross keeps it, and he's bottled up immediately. Good job of that Farmington defensive line reading the quarterback there and bringing him down. That's a gain of about a yard for Gross, but fourth down coming up. You're right there at midfield. Do you think about possibly going for it, or do you just punt it away and play the field position game? Sykes has got a lot of momentum right now, and that last play was very similar to when we saw a while ago when Gross broke out there for uh, 29 yards. And they've got their offense on the field like they're going to go for it. Fourth down and three coming for Sykeston. Man in motion from left to right from the shotgun formation. They've now got trips to the right. One receiver to the left. Here's the shotgun. It's a play fake, and he's got his man over the middle, and he's could be gone to the 20, to the 10. It's a touchdown. See you later. Pat Gross on the reception, and he goes about 53 yards to the promised land for the Sykeston Bulldogs. They're up two scores. Boy, what a nice play there. Everybody was keying on Gross, and you can't, you can't not key on him, but his uh, slot receiver there just ran right down the seam and was wide open. Little play fake, Gross hit him with the, hit him right in the numbers, and he did the rest with his legs. 53 yards from Gross to Gross. Kylan Gross to Pat Gross. Sykeson's now going to go for two to make it a 14-0 lead if they can get it in. Kylan Gross is going to work from under center. Man in motion left to right. Here comes a pitch on a sweep, and the tailback lowers his shoulders. I don't think he got the plane. He did not. He stopped short of the goal line. Sykeston scores twice in the first quarter but can't get the PATs to go. It's 12 to nothing Bulldogs over Farmington with 8.17 to play in the first. We're back in 30 on AM 800 KRBI. By now you know that Cartridge World can fill your HP, Brother, Canon, Dell, Lexmark, and Epson laser and ink cartridges, and when they fill them, you'll always get Cartridge World's 100% satisfaction guarantee. And as they begin their fifth year in business, they say thank you to St. Francis and surrounding counties for your continued support and trust in their business. Now during this economy, doesn't it make sense to shop where you get great value and service on a product you use every day? Thanks for making Cartridge World your number one choice in saving money. That's Cartridge World in the Maple Valley Shopping Center, Farming. Well, Sykeston's touched the ball twice, once on special teams, once on offense. They've scored both times, and they've really kind of taken a lot of wind out of the Farmington sales with a 12 nothing lead, not even four minutes into the game, Luke. Boy, uh, I'll tell you what, the this, this Sykeston team, uh, you know, they were still trying to figure some things out. They had been turnover prone before, but they come out of the gate, I mean, are running today, and uh, we see why this might be the number 16 in the state right now. It was an 89-yard drive on that last one. It sure was, yeah. Sykeson. Only four plays there. Uh, a couple, a big run by Kylan Gross, quarterback, and then, a, like you said, an excellent play fake to throw down the seam to, to Gross, the other Gross. Mm-hmm. To he Pat. Took, Pat Gross. And he took it 53 yards for the score, and Sykeston takes a 12 nothing lead. Couldn't get that two-point conversion to go. It was a little pitch out to Gross, and he was stopped short at the one-yard line on the two-point conversion. So Farmington's going to go back on offense here, assuming they can get this kickoff, and Sykeston doesn't try any funny business. Before Oaks kicks it off, 
We've got the official coming out to talk to him. That'll give me some time to thank some sponsors. We've got plenty of them today. A lot of excitement for this one. ProCare Automotive and Don Terre, Bidding Ford and Fredericktown. Earth Mother Health Foods, Braden May Concrete in Farmington, Gifford Lumber Company in Farmington, and Midwest Convenient Care in Farmington and Bon Terre. Big drive of the game so far is Saxon's 89-yard drive, and it's brought to you by ProCare Automotive in Bon Terre. So here we go. Dustin Oaks to kick it deep. And Farmington trying to get on the scoreboard. Donovan back to return for the Knights. And look at all this trickeration they pull. And then it's not even Oaks kicking it off. It looks like Oaks is going to kick it deep. Then they bring somebody else in there to kick it. And it's going to be fielded back at the five-yard line. And did they say his did his knee slip there? And did he go down? That must have been the case there. And uh, they're going to call him down at what the somewhere around the five-yard line on that one. I didn't see him slip to his knee, but maybe that's what the case was. Are they going to they're going to put it at the twenty and say touchback? Not sure on the call there. That did not go in the end zone whatsoever. Didn't, didn't come close. Came about five yards. It was five yards away from the end zone, but they called it a touchback. Oh, I guess that'll work for Farmington. They'll start at the 20-yard line. They'll put twins right, twins left. Here's the shotgun snap, a delayed handoff up the middle. Colton Coulter on the run. Picks up a nice chunk of about eight yards as he goes up the middle, then cuts to his left. Coulter now is in the black with two yards rushing. Remember that first run went negative six. The second down and two for the Farmington Knights. Bame working from the shotgun. Looks like Hopkins has checked in at receiver. He's in the slot to the left. Twins right, twins to the left. There's the shotgun snap. Bame is back to pass. Has some time. He's going to throw deep over the middle. Under through his man. It's nearly intercepted. Knocked away by one of those Sykeston defensive backs. Austin Brown on the coverage. And luckily, luckily that wasn't picked off. He just underthrew his target. He sure did. Bame took the snap, looked left, did a little pump fake, and tried to hit his man Donovan going down the seam there. But he was just too well covered and uh, really just tried to force the ball in there. Luckily, like you said, it wasn't intercepted. So Farmington with a third down and two. Justin Bame with Coulter to his right from the shotgun. Twins right, twins left. He awaits the snap as they work from that no-huddle offense like they've been doing. I guess ever since Coach Vaughn's been coaching for Farmington. A no-huddle attack. They can sure hurry up. On third down and two, here's the shotgun snap, and they're going to swing it out to a quick wide receiver screen on the far side. This receiver makes a man miss. That's Evan Donovan. He's got about five yards on the catch. First down, Farmington. That's the first first down of the ball game. Well, there's a flag on the play. They're going to say that his receiver was holding while the ball was in the air what it looks like. That'll negate that first down and back him up. And a third down and long coming up for Farmington if indeed it is the case. And the penalty goes against the Knights. That'll be their first penalty of the ball game. Farmington likes to run that little wide receiver screen where the slot guy actually goes up and blocks. But the key is, is you can't really make that contact and block while the ball is still in the air. Or basically it's what they call passive offensive pass interference. So instead of third down and two you're looking at third down and 10 with the ball spotted back at the 20-yard line. Seven minutes, 31 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Farmington needs some kind of positive momentum to go their way as they trail 12 to nothing. From the shotgun, Bain has it. Coulter is flanking him to the right. Two receivers out left, two receivers also to the right this time. Justin Bain takes the shotgun snap, drops back to pass, has a clean pocket, and he's going to try to air it out again down the right side, off the hands of his target, incomplete, a perfect pass, but he just could not hold on, and that's Evan Donovan with the drop. Man, that pass couldn't have been any better. Boy, and that's Donovan's favorite route is that seam go route. I'll tell you what, Justin Bain, best ball he's probably thrown all year long, just off the fingertips there for Justin. Evan and, Donovan, wow. And, and you know Donovan, you know, nine times, eight times out of ten is going to reel that in, and he's probably gone for an 80-yard touchdown, but on that one he just could not haul it in. Fourth down and ten, 7-12 left to play, first quarter. Dusold's punt is a spiral. That's going to be fielded back at the 45-yard line after a bounce. Here's Marquez Newman again, and he just looks dangerous with the football. He gets hit pretty hard, a crown collision of the game up the sideline, but he gets it to the 39-yard line. Got a 16-yard return on a punt return, and Sykeson set up with great field position, and their dangerous offense is back on the field. Well, I don't, I don't know if you noticed there, Glenn. Looks like they punted off the right hash mark. I think their punter punted it way too far left, almost outkicked his coverage. Like you said, dangerous return man there. Uh, I think that's something that probably coaches are going to talk about and say, "Hey, man, you can't kick it that far off your coverage, or we're going to we're already in a hole in this game." Marquez Newman has already returned a kickoff for a touchdown, 85 yards. 
and he had 16 yards on that one. Here's a shotgun snap to Gross. Gross is going to try the delayed handoff. He goes to Chris Word on that one, but Word's not going to get much, about a half a yard. He's had two carries in this ball game. Second down and a long nine coming up for the Sykes and Bulldogs. But again, they were set up with great field, field, field position on this drive at the 39. Now they're at the Farmington 38. If Farmington can limit the big plays, their defense has actually been able to play with this and contain this Saxon offense. Shotgun set, two receivers left, two right. Gross is going to take the snap, pump fake, rolls out, had a man all over him, but got out of it and dumps it underneath, but the pass is dropped incomplete. Third down coming up for Sykeston. To Terrence Harris couldn't reel that one in. Oh, I'll tell you what, so here we go, two downs. Farmington defense has played pretty well now. Don't give up the big play on this third and ten. On that one, Gross looked dead to rights in the backfield for a sack, but just kind of turned his shoulder pads, got up field, and dumped it off underneath, avoided the sack, and really his receiver let him down on that play. Yeah, that kid's definitely a playmaker. Got a lot of speed back there. Third down and nine. Man in motion. It's Harris, and Harris is going to get the carry. Harris takes it off a left tackle. Is going to get about five yards. Ball came out there. It's loose back at the 40. Sykes and falls on it. Question is, was Harris down before the ball came out? Either way, it's going to be fourth down coming up, but you're looking at five to six yards field position here as the ball goes backwards. Looks like that was a live ball. Sykes and fell on it, and a fourth and 11 coming up. They lost about six yards they there. They sure did, yeah. It doesn't look like it's going to affect the coach's decision to go for it, but definitely helps out Farmington in a, about a fourth and 11 here. Yeah, rather than fourth and five. So here we go, fourth down and 11 Bulldogs at the 40-yard line of Farmington. Farmington's defense Needs to make a play. Kylan Gross takes the shotgun snap. Clean pocket. He's going to fire over the middle. And intercepted by Farmington. Here comes the return. No, he was down. But Farmington gets the big pick at the 25-yard line. Hey, that's a great play. And I tell you what, it actually, in all honesty, it probably would have been better for him to drop that ball because you lose about 10 or 11 yards field position there. But that interception gives you so much enthusiasm and momentum and intensity. I like to play. Farmington's got to come out here and show us something on offense now, though. With the new number for Ryder Garrett, I almost didn't recognize him, but he is the one who picked it off. So Ryder Garrett dropping back there in coverage, intercepted it. You're right. It actually cost him in field position, but it's hard to turn down an interception. Farmington football at the 25. Shotgun snap. Bam. He's going to hand it off to Coulter. Coulter looking for the edge. Not going to get it. It's hard to find the edge against these speedy defenders, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Actually, not even that. He lost about a yard. Second and 11 coming up. Sykeston's defensive line doing a nice job of closing off that end. Coulter, he's had a couple, one or two nice runs in this ball game, but they're really going to have to keep pressing that line of scrimmage. Three carries for one yard for Coulter after his first one went negative six. He had an eight-yard carry, and then he goes backwards again here. So now Farmington with a second down and 11. Trips to the left for Justin Bame. Coulter flanking him to the right in the backfield. Now Coulter will switch sides. Now Coulter's flanking Bame to the left. Here comes the snap. Hands it off to Coulter. Coulter is going to push the pile for a gain of about two, maybe three yards, setting up third down and long again for Farmington. It's hard to convert when you set yourself up for third and eight, third and nine, third and ten, rather than third and one, third and two, third and three. Oh, absolutely. But we know this Farmington, they like to chuck the ball around the field. You know, the passing game is uh, their bread and butter. But still, you want it to be a little bit more manageable than that third and long. They'll again line up trips to the left. One receiver outright with Coulter the back of the backfield, flanking Bain to his right. Four minutes, 23 seconds left to go first quarter. Farmington trails by two scores, 12 to nothing. There's the shotgun snap. Bain back to pass quickly, gets the ball out to his man underneath on a curl, but he's going to make the catch a yard short of the first down as Devin Nagel making his first catch for Farmington. Devin Nagel, the 6'5", uh, Junior, I like him. I like the kid, but you got to get past the, those, those markers. You know, that's what they coach you to do. If it's a first down, you got to get past that first down marker when you make that curl route. Farmington has the punt formation out there with Austin Dussold to punt it away. I wouldn't put it past Coach Vaughn to maybe do a direct snap here and try to pick up the one yard. It's about a half yard to go for the first, but let's see what Coach Vaughn has up his sleeve if he's indeed punting it away here. Marquez Newman back to return. Here's the snap, and it is a punt end over end, and he's going to angle it, try to angle it out of bounds. Couldn't get it there, though. Sykeson's going to try to pick this up. Marquez Newman's got it, but he is lit up at the 36-yard line. He wasn't going anywhere that time. Ground collision, collision of the game. Sykeson starts at about the 36, 37. He did the same thing he did last time, kicked his coverage off to the left, but this time he, get, he let his uh, teammates get down there, allowed him enough time, and Newman making a bad decision. Could have been real risky, but... Uh, 
great special teams coverage right there. Yeah, you can tell he's a playmaker and trying to make something happen. He should have just stayed away from that ball there and took it where it was. He tried to pick it up, and he's luckily lucky he didn't fumble after that big hit. Sykes holds on to it at the 37-yard line, and here come the Bulldogs down 12 to nothing. It was an interception on that last possession. Here's a handoff to Pat Gross. He's going to try to get the edge and gets up to about the 40-yard line for a gain of three on the carry. Pat Gross, that was his first official carry of the ball game. He did have a carry on the uh, two-point conversion attempt earlier. And had the big uh, 56-yard touchdown pass a while ago, too. Second down and seven from the 40-yard line on Sykeson's side of the field. Twin receivers left, twin receivers to the right. Pat Gross dropping back to pass, has is it running back underneath. It's Word. Word makes one man miss, holding that ball like a loaf of bread, though. Lucky he didn't cough it up. Got some positive yards. Yeah, we've already seen Word actually fumble it once, was able to recover it. I wasn't sure if it was him that fumbled it on the last drive, though. That actually cost him some field position on uh, third down. Got a three-yard catch there from Gross to Word. Third down and four coming up. We know the Sykeson team, they're, they're turnover prone. Farmington's just got to make them do it. Trips to the left, one receiver to the right from Shotgun. There's the delayed handoff again. It goes to Word. Word's got the first down up across the 50 to about the 47 of Farmington. That'll move the chains. First down, Bulldogs. 10-yard carry for Chris Word. Gross will lead his team back to the line on a first down of 10. You see on these delayed handoffs, I mean, Gross keeps that hand in the in the gut of his running back until the running back's pretty much three yards up the field already. He'll keep it in there for a long time to try to sell that fake, and now he does the same thing, keeps it this time to the right. He's hit hard from behind, but gets up to the 40-yard line, picks up six yards on a quarterback keeper, does Pat Gross. And it's exactly why he does that. You know, you give that extra two seconds to make that freeze that Farmington defense and uh, – Gross has got that ability to take it to the outside and uh, make something happen. I said Pat Gross. It was the quarterback, Kylan Gross, excuse me. Too many Grosses on the field. Second down and four from the 40 of Farmington. They started at their own 37-yard line. Sykeson did. Man in motion. It's Pat Gross, and they will hand it off to him. He's going to get the edge. He's up across the 40 to the 35. Lost the football. It's rolling to the sideline, and it looks like Sykeson has caught a break as it goes out of bounds. And you're right, Sykeson has been turnover prone in this ballgame. They're just not holding on to the football. If Farmington can take advantage and get one of those to go their way, they already did get the interception, but just ball security right now for Sykeson has to be a concern for Coach Gibbs. Yeah, that's the third fumble, and Sykeson's actually been able to recover all three fumbles. And then there was the big interception there on fourth down. And what you know, if the ball goes out of bounds beyond the sticks, it was a first down for Sykeson on the run. Pat Gross gets seven yards. So Gross has fumbled once. Bird has fumbled twice and they've recovered all three then you mix in Kylan Gross's interception picked off by Ryder Garrett first down and 10 at the 35 yard line of the farming tonight shotgun snap they'll fake it to Pat Gross it's a play action pass and he's going to go over the middle to the right side of the field incomplete that ball dropped by Reese Porter. Pretty good coverage in the area, though, there for the Farmington defense to be able to knock that one away. It sure was. And Kylan just a little bit behind his man, Reese Porter, there. Threw it just a little bit behind him, gave the Farmington defense that extra half a second to get in there and make a play. I think it was Hopkins who came up from behind, knocked that ball away. We saw Hopkins get an interception last week against Jackson. Pretty good secondary player for Farmington's defense. We got a second down and 10 from the 35-yard line. Pat Gross goes in motion. They'll fake it to him, hand it off to Word. Word spins off a tackle, brought down by his jersey at about the 31-yard line for a gain of four. If he's not grabbed by his jersey, he might be off and running for about 10 more yards on the play. Yeah, I think that was uh, Jake Henson there, the defensive lineman for Farmington, just did a good job of hanging onto that jersey and uh, gave his teammates a few, bit, a few extra seconds to get over there and help him out on the tackle. Second down, or third down and five from the 30-yard line. And here is Gross keeping it himself, and he is planted into the turf. He wasn't going anywhere, maybe a yard on the carry. Another crown collision, collision of the game right there. Ryder Garrett coming up and driving him to the ground. It's a nice play there, and bringing up fourth down here. Huge play for this Farmington defense. Sykeston going for it again. The Bulldogs also not huddling up this afternoon against Farmington. 
at the Edward Jones Dome. Great American Football Classic on AM800 KRE. It's a 12 to nothing lead for Sykes, and so far they're trying to add to it. They've got a fourth down and three from the 28-yard line. Pat Gross goes in motion. It's Kylan Gross under center. He's going to hand it off right side. It's Word, I believe, on the carry, but he loses two yards. Turnover on downs. Farmington's defense starting to stiffen up now, Luke. Boy, I tell you what, I don't know who it was. If that was Zach Grief or Ryder Garrett that just came. I mean, they had the snap count almost figured out and just busted through that offensive line. And uh, great pursuit there. Oh, and they just, yeah, they are going to. That's a first down just enough. Wow. I thought that was a stop. No, it's first down Farmington. It's Farmington football oh, there. Sorry, so, yeah, yeah, he, I was going to say, he, he had to have lost at least one yard on the play. Yeah. So, yeah, he went backwards, first down Farmington, and there's the shotgun snap to Bain. Bain fakes the handoff to Coulter, but can't go anywhere. He'll lose about a yard on the carry. Sykeson's been ready for that, just like Jackson was last week. Bain hasn't had a whole lot of room running the football today. No, he hasn't. The running lanes just really haven't been there quite yet, but... When he has dropped back to pass, I feel like he's gotten a little bit yep. more time than we saw last week. Yeah, he's had all day to throw the football. And now the quarter runs to an end. It's 12 to nothing. Sykeston, after one quarter of play, a kickoff return for a touchdown and a 56-yard pass and catch from the Gross brothers, Kylan to Pat. And Sykeston leads it by two scores. We'll step away for 30 seconds and bring it back from the Great American Football Classic from the Dome on AM 800 KRBI. I am ready for some football. ProCare Automotive Repair and Bon Terre is family-owned and ASC and AAA approved. ProCare Repairs are backed by a 12-month, 12 12,000-mile 12, nationwide warranty, allowing you to drive away with confidence, not questions. Need repairs today but more time to pay? Ask about their 6- and 12-month payment options. Find them online at ProCareForYourCar.com or call 358-1112. ProCare Automotive Repair. When it's repaired once, it's repaired right. When you're ready to build a home, a building, or even an addition, the most important part is the foundation that it stands on. You want the best, and the name to remember for the best is Braden May Concrete, LLC. With 30 years of experience, fully insured Braden May Concrete, LLC, pours all size walls, retaining walls, basements, flat work, and more for residential or commercial properties. Call Braden May Concrete, LLC, on Highway 221 in Farmington today at 760-0003 for quality work at competitive prices. It's the Great American Football Classic from the Edward Jones Dome. Game number two of the afternoon. Farmington trailing Sykes in 12 nothing after one quarter of play. The Farmington Knights are set up at their 29-yard line with a second down and 11 coming up. Here's a Bain dropping back to pass. Has his man Calvin Lynch at the 35-yard line. Went backwards, then gets it back across the 35 to the 36-yard line. He'll gain seven yards on the catch from Bain. To Lynch. Nice little hook grab by Brent Lynch there. And uh, I like how he got around field. Like you said, went backwards a little bit, but then got right back upfield, turned his shoulder pads around. Third down and three for Farmington. Twins left, twins right. Shotgun the formation. Bain awaits the snap with Coulter to his right. There's the snap. Drops back to pass. He's had some time today and has his man over the middle. He'll take it to the left across the 45-yard line to the 47-yard line. That was Jared Dunlap making that play. Ten yards and a first down for Farmington. And we talked about this before. Uh, Farmington's kind of always in that no-huddle offense, but you can tell right now they're just trying to get up the line a lot quicker and uh, really speed up the pace of this offense. And Coach Vaughn was telling me, you know, when, when it's working, when they're moving the football, it really seems like they picked up the pace. Oh, here's a high snap over Bame's head. He's got to get to it before Sykeston. There's a fight for it on the turf back at the 20 three-yard line. They're going to say Sykeston football and a big, big mistake on the high snap. Bain couldn't beat the Sykeston defenders to the ball. Boy, just a real unfortunate turn of events right there for Farmington because, uh, like you said, that offense was just starting to look like it was going to click. Ouch. That uh, gives Sykeson the ball at the 24-yard line. First turnover of the game for Farmington. Sykeson's also turned over the ball one time. So that battle's even, but the scoreboard battle is not. 12 nothing Bulldogs, and they're set up now inside the 25. Here's Gross from the shotgun, spreading Farmington out with four wide. Here's the delayed handoff up the middle, taking it up inside the 20 to about the 19-yard line was Word. And he gets a carry of about four yards. Well, you've just seen that surge out of that Sykeston offensive line just basically just pushing its way up there. You know, you can't really give up four yards at a time because that's, you know, that's just not going to add up. 
Second down and six from the Farmington 19-yard line. They'll even out the formation now with twins right, twins left. Kylan Gross from the shotgun has word of flanking him to his right. Man in motion. Motion man is not going to get the handoff. They faked it to him. Kylan Gross, I think, wanted to give it to him. Instead, takes it up the middle and gets about to the 16, a gain of three yards on that one. I don't know, it looked to me like Gross wanted to hand that one off, and the, the, his motion man wasn't ready for the football, Reese Porter. Got, so, a little, got a little bit turned around there, and as he broke for the outside, nice job by the Farmers defense for at least turning him back inside where they had some defensive help. Gross still got three yards on that carry. Third down and three from the 16-yard line. Again, two receivers... Three receivers right, one to the left. Man in motion right to left, and he will get the handoff. No, play fake, and they're going to go over the middle. Almost intercepted again. Farmington missed a golden opportunity with Trey Amsden dropping the pass that was thrown right to him. It looked like Trey Amsden was the intended target on that one. Can I tell you what? Yeah, that would have been nice for the – and, you know, Trey's just going to have to shake that one off because they've got a big down coming up right now. Yeah, if you can still make the stop on fourth down and three, no harm done. And now we're going to get a timeout. Sykeston, they want to talk about this one. It's 12 nothing Bulldogs. We'll keep it right here during this timeout because we do want to thank some sponsors like Hood's Discount Home Center in Farmington, Show Me Rent to Own, along with Buckley Towing in Park Hills, Midwest Orthopedic Group in Farmington, American Family Insurance Agent Bill Bess in Park Hills, and Mineral Area College. So, you know, neither team is particularly taking care of the ball well today, but Farmington just the one turnover. Sykes, and it, that's been an area of the, their game that you can really exploit because they've been fumbling the football all over the place, should have two interceptions on the day at least so far. They have turned it over one time. Farmington's defense has had some opportunities to take the football away. Oh, well, they absolutely, and right here is a big, big down, Glenn. I mean, fourth down in about four right now, and I'll tell you what, you know, Sykes, it seems like they've controlled this game, but, you know, Farmington's only down 12 points. They can make that up pretty quick if they make, get a big stop here. Farmington's defense is definitely stiffened as this game's gone along, and if they can hold up one more time after that big fumbled snap, that might lift their offense to something bigger and better. So from the shotgun, it's gross. He'll send Porter in motion. A delayed handoff left side. He's trying to get the 15 stretches for it. Ball came out again. I think he was down. He's down at the 15-yard line, though. That's a gain of just one yard. It should be a turnover on downs. Farmington football coming up. And they are going to call it turnover. Farmington makes another big stop on defense. Defensively, they're playing much better in this second quarter, aren't they? Yeah, they've seemed to get some stuff together. and I, Yeah, they're stopping down, keeping an eye on Kylan Gross, containing him, making him go to that passing game where he hasn't been quite as successful all year long. He made a nice pass earlier in the game, but... Right now, Farmington defense is playing up to their potential. It was a gain of one yard. He needed it three. So first down and 10 from the 15 for Farmington. Shotgun snap comes to Bain. Bain has had time to throw it. He's going to try to go deep up the middle. This one a little bit overthrown to the middle of the field. Jared Dunlap wants a pass interference call. He gets up asking for the flag and does not get it. Second and 10 coming up. All right, running that scene. And Jared Dunlap made some big plays out of that slot a couple weeks ago. Uh, I'd like to see Bain looking his way. That breaks a streak of three straight completions from Justin Bame. He is now three of six on the day for 25 yards. Second down and 10 from the 15-yard line. Back to the line quickly comes Farmington. you got to like what you see from this offensive line, giving Bame all day to pass. Here is the delayed handoff goes to Colton Coulter, and Coulter's going to lose a yard to two yards on this one. As good as the line has been, pass blocking, the run blocking just hasn't been there, though. Not a whole lot of running lanes today, Luke. No, they sure haven't. Can't just can't seem to get that extra surge they need. While the pass protection has been there, uh, just really can't get much going with the running game. They give Coulter zero yards on that carry. No loss, third down and 10. We're at nine minutes, one second left to go in the second quarter. It's a 12-0 lead for Sykeston. Farmington trying to make a dent in the scoreboard. Three down linemen for Sykeston. Quickly to the line, it's Bame, and then the play comes in. Twins right, twins left. And with five seconds on the play clock, Coulter will switch sides in the backfield. Down to two seconds on the play clock. There's the shotgun snap, comes to Bame. Bame, clean pocket again, fires over the middle, has his man. It was behind him, but he reaches back and makes the catch at the 30-yard line. Oh, a nice catch there. It was that Cameron Quarter there coming off the slot, just ran a little bit of an in slant route. And, uh, what a huge catch for a first down there. 15 yards and a first down, moves the chains. Farmington 
They were starting to move the ball pretty effectively before that bad snap on their last drive. Maybe they can get something going here. Quickly to the line they go. Twins right, twins left. There's the shotgun snap. It's bobbled this time. Bame's going to take it himself right side. He's going to get positive yards. Ball comes out. Saxon takes it out of the air. He's gone. 10-5. Touchdown. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Just bad luck for Farmington in this second quarter. They've had two plays like that now that have doomed them in this ball game. Boy, Justin Bame can't believe it. You know, trying to make something out of nothing there and just get a few yards. And boy, you got to hold on to that football. And Sykeston making taking the most out of that opportunity and taking it all the way back to the house. Whew. Wow. And that's just. It, you know, I've said it before in this game, but talk about taking the wind out of your sails. That's two drives in a row now. You started to move the football, and you get to buzz the things going, and then all of a su- sudden something, you know, drastic hap- that happens that takes you out of your game. That one results in a touchdown. Now Sykeson's going to go for two, but first we're going to get a timeout. Bulldogs. It's an 18 to nothing lead now for Sykeson. They'll try to tack more onto it with a two-point conversion after the break. We'll come back in 30 on AM 800 KRBI. What's your idea of financial security? Goal number one, I want to make sure there's some kind of safety net for my family. Oh, just peace of mind. You know, no coulda, woulda, shouldas. No matter where you're starting from, your country financial representative can provide you with a tangible plan to protect what you have today and plan for the future. At Country, we always ask, what's your idea of financial security? For all your insurance needs, call me, Phyllis Trollinger, in Farmington at 756-8600. After a fumble return for a touchdown by the Sykeston defense, Bain coughed up the football, and now Sykeston is going to go for two to try to make this a 20 to nothing ball game. Eight minutes, ten seconds left to go. In this second quarter, for Farmington, it's been one step forward and about three steps back in this ball game, and it started from the opening kickoff. Under center is Kylan Gross. He's going to drop back to pass after a play fake. He's looking for the end zone, fires, and has a man wide open, nearly dropped, but he got Pat Gross for the two-point conversion. He bobbled that football a little bit, but nobody in sight to bring him down and knock the ball out, so he holds on to it. Two-point conversion is good. It's 20 to nothing, Sykeston. Boy, that was a nice little play fake by Colin Gross, but you could see why they're turnover prone. I mean, he comes out of that pocket with that ball just hanging out there in his right arm. If somebody was to get a hold of him, I'll tell you what, this kid, as good an athlete as he is, he's not, ta- you know, he doesn't take care of the ball very well. Yeah, but, you know, the way he was holding that football, the reason that was such a good play fake was the way he was holding that football because he was kind of hiding it behind him. But, you know, if he gets hit from behind there, that ball is coming out. So it was good and bad at the same time. It just happened to work out. It worked out in that play, and uh, it's worked out for him pretty much so far this afternoon as Sykes is going to go up 20 to nothing on Farmington right now, mainly due to a a bunch of Farmington miscues, you know, the kickoff return to start the game off and then the the fumble recovery there. I think that was Quarmain Owens, by the way, who had that fumble return for a touchdown for the Sykeston Bulldogs to make it 18 to nothing. Then the two-point conversion makes it 20 to nothing. And Farmington, well, they're behind the eight ball now. They were behind the eight ball to start this game, though. They kick it off, and Marquez Newman takes it 85 yards back for a touchdown. From there, you're playing catch-up. Then a couple of bad breaks with a fumbled snap. And then the, uh, the fumble by Justin Bame is trying to make something out of nothing. Sure, and like you said, the defense has started to play so well, too was really containing that Sykeston offense, and uh, to give one up in that sense is just really kind of heartbreaking. You're listening to AM800 KREI Farmington to Park Hills Deloge. It's a 20 to nothing lead for Sykeston, and here's a squib kick covered up by Jared Dunlap at the 31-yard line. Farmington football, still plenty of time left to go, not only in this half, but in this game. If you can get downfield and make this a two-score game at halftime, you're certainly right there in it. This does kind of remind me a little bit of the Jackson game, though, last week. Is in the first half, Farmington just really couldn't do a whole lot. But they are moving the football better than they did against Jackson. Just no points to show for it. Having a little bit of success in the passing game, yeah. Like you said, uh, can't really move the ball on the ground. And, uh, you know, eventually you got to think that's going to catch up with them. Empty backfield now as Farmington's going to go five wide this time and abandon the run, at least on a handoff. Here's a quick wide receiver screen out to, I believe it was Dunlap on the far side. He'll stretch for a couple of more yards, maybe two yards on the catch, and Dunlap is roped up. They'll just give him one. Dunlap, two catches, 11 yards in this game. Second down and nine from the 32-yard line is what we'll call it with 7.47 to play first half. 
Sykeston's been running with three down linemen. As Farmington goes to a primary passing attack. Motion man from left to right, and here's a fake handoff, and Bain gets absolutely blasted. Faked it to the motion man, handed it off to Coulter. Coulter and Bain were hit at the same time by one of those big D linemen for Sykes, and he just got back there and broke things up right away. Boy, that's, it's, a, it's a hard hit whenever you can take two guys down like that. Nick Nichols makes the stop in the backfield, and it's a big loss now for Farmington. Third down and 13 coming up as Coulter loses five yards on that carry. He's gone backwards today. He's in the red as far as rushing goes. He's really had a tough time, but it's not been his fault. He just hasn't had any kind of room whatsoever. Farmington back to the line with twins right and twins left. Here's Bame awaiting that shotgun snap. He takes it, drops back to pass, but a flag comes out. This will be the first penalty against Farmington, if indeed it is, against the Knights. Hasn't been a whole lot of penalties called in this game. It does go against Farmington, and again, that's their first. Sykeston has had one go against them. Farmington's turned the ball over twice, losing that battle as well. Sykeston's caught the ball up more times than Farmington, but they've been able to fall on top of some of those fumbles. The Knights have not been able to do that. So third down and long, third and just about forever, 18 yards to get the first down and move the chains. Bain is back to pass, steps up in the pocket, and he's going to pull it down and run. He's got a big running lane up to the 40-yard line, close to a first down, about the 41. He needed the 41. It's going to depend on a spot right here, but that's about an 18-yard run for Bain. Let's see if they give him the forward progress on a first down. Boy, and he had all day to run out there. Uh, it was like... Sykes and dropped back in like a dime coverage. Just everybody was out there in pass coverage, and Bame just saw the lane and went with it. And a really nice play by Justin Bame. We're going to get a timeout for a measurement. I mean, you're talking the nose of a football difference right here, maybe a chain link. That was so close to a first down. They're going to come out and measure it. He needed the 41, got to the 41. It's just a matter of how far across the line he got, and he got it. Nose of the football is beyond the chains. First down, Farmington on the 18-yard run by Bame. That's a big third down conversion. Now the Knights hurry back to the line. Yeah, kind of got themselves in a hole there with that big sack, but uh, or the big tackle in the backfield. But nice play by Bame there on third down. and Got to keep it going. Coulter had gone backwards five yards, and then the penalty had a third down and 18 before he picked that one up. Now Bame is back to pass. Gives up a lot of ground. Dumps it off over the middle on a screen, but overthrew his target. Incomplete. Looking for Coulter there on the running back screen, and it falls to the turf. Just a little bit high there trying to set up that screen. And I think Sexton kind of had it read out, too, as Bain just back, kept backpedaling. Second down, 10 yards to go. Ball at the 41-yard line. Still Farmington's side of the field. We're at 5 minutes, 54 seconds left in the second quarter. Farmington needs anything positive to happen for him right now before we go into the halftime break. Here's the shotgun snap. Bames back to pass again. Given ground again. Steps up in the pocket. He's hit as he throws it. He's intercepted at the 40. And the return is to about the 33-yard line. That's the third Farmington turnover. Two fumbles and an interception now as that one's picked off by Audrey Golden, the outside linebacker. And Bain was hit as he threw that one in. It was just a wobbler that ducked out of there, and Golden picked it off and returned it to about the 33. Sure was, and another another unfortunate turn of events there. Like I said, Bain got hit while he threw it, and Golden just made the nice play. Three turnovers for Farmington, set Sykeson up in prime position again. Here's Kylan Gross on the keeper. After faking it to his tailback, he's up to about the 30-yard line. Three-yard carry for Kylan Gross. He broke off a 28-yarder on his first carry. Since then, his best carry has been six yards, but he's done a lot with his legs today, including the passing game on a 56-yard touchdown pass to Pat Gross. who gave Sykes in their second score of the ball game. They've scored on offense, defense, and special teams today, Luke. Yeah, I tell you what, really, the, you know, the one, besides the one pass play, though, Farmington's played nice defense. 20 to nothing. Here's the shotgun snap. Gross fakes the handoff and takes it to the left this time. And he's weaving throughout some defenders. Gets it inside the 30 to about the 27-yard line. Another gain of three. They'll set up third down and three coming up. His last carries, the last three carries have all gone for three yards. 4.45 left to play in the half. Farmington, they're back against the wall on defense. As the offense hasn't helped him a whole lot with these turnovers. 
They sure have, and they've just been you know, those turnovers have resulted in excellent field position for Sykes. To- They're down to three for the Bulldogs. There's the delayed handoff right side. Word hit the hole quickly. He's all the way up to the 11 or the 16 yard line on the run. Gain of 11, and that was amazing how fast he hit that hole. Farmington didn't even know he had the ball by the time he got to the 16, 11 yards later. It was a nice hole open there. Word, such a big runner. If he can just start getting downhill, he's going to be hard to stop. So first down, 10 yards from the 16-yard line of Farmington. Sykes and spreads him out again. They'll go two left, two right on the receivers. There's Pat Gross going in motion, and they will fake the handoff to him. Gross rolling out on a play fake, fires to the left side. It's caught inside the five-yard line. That's another first down for the Sykes and Bulldogs, hauling it in. Jacob Stinnett, team captain, first and goal coming up for Sykeston. That was a nice play fake there. And, uh, you know, I wasn't giving Kylan Gross very much credit at the beginning of the game for being a passer, but he's made some nice throws tonight. He's really selling his play fakes well. So now... On the first and goal from the three-yard line, here is a handoff right up the middle. It's Chris Word, and he had no trouble there. Another big hole created by that offensive line. Word takes it in, and Sykeston now leads it 26-20 to 20 on the three-yard run by Chris Word. Nothing much to that that drive. I, you give him excellent field position, and he knew eventually that, that Farmington defense, uh, tell you what, that the offense for Sykeston just got rolling on that one. Plus, Farmington's D's been out there so long, and a lot of those, you know, some of those guys play both ways, so they've got to be getting tired out there. And now Sykeson's going to go for two to try to make it 28 nothing. Shotgun snap goes to Gross. Another play fake. Sells it well again. He's going to dump it off. Underthrown. Incomplete. Might have got batted down by one of those linemen underneath. Incomplete pass on the two-point conversion. But a 26 nothing lead for Sykeson. And that was a drive loop that started, what, right around the 33, 35-yard line? 35-yard line, yeah. Set up by the interception there by Good or Golden. And, uh, Sykes and really uh, no problem moving the ball in this last drive. A couple of nice runs by Chris Word there. And eventually the three-yard, he punched it in from three yards out. And that nice uh, display of passing by Kylan Gross. 26 nothing. the Sykes and lead. 3.59 left to go in the half. We're back in 30 seconds at the Edward Jones Dome on AM800 KREI. Do you have a hard time leaving your pets when you go on vacation or out of town for a holiday? Don't worry. Leave your pets at Terrace Ridge Kennels in Farmington. Terrace Ridge Kennels loves all animals from birds to pigs and dogs to cats. Terrace Ridge even offers animal grooming. Call Sally at Terrace Ridge Kennels at 756-8091. Terrace Ridge Kennels is proud of the Farmington Knights and commends them on their great sportsmanship. Keep up the good work, Farmington Knights, from Terrace Ridge Kennels. Sykeson scored twice on offense through the air and on the ground. They've scored once on defense on a fumble recovery return for a touchdown. They've scored once on special teams on the opening kickoff return for a touchdown, and they lead it 26 to nothing over the Farmington Knights. And now the kickoff. It's another squib kick, and Dunlap's going to field it at the 28-yard line, takes it up to the 30, up to the 35, makes a man miss up to the 40 before he's hit hard at about the 41, 42-yard line. Decent return on a squib kick sets Farmington up with good field position at the 42, and the Knights really need to make something happen now. I know we've been saying it drive after drive after drive, but got to nip these turnovers in the bud right away. They sure have in the last two last two series. They get a little bit of momentum going on offense, and then, boom, there's a turnover, and uh, that last one cost them big time. Two fumbles and an interception so far for Farmington. They've lost all three of those. So here comes the Knights again. Two receivers right, two to the left. Fake handoff, Coulter. Bain bottled up in the backfield again. Just nowhere to go. That Saxon D-line has been all over that play all game long. He's back at the 36-yard line. He's going to lose about three yards on that one, four yards on the loss for Justin Bain. Yeah, his offensive lineman, Austin Herbst, there just picking him up off the turf saying, sorry, buddy, about that one. <laughs> Second down and 14 to go. Ball spotted at the 38-yard line as they'll go twins left and twins to the right. Three down lineman for Sykeson as Bain drops back to pass after the shotgun snap. Throws high and left his receiver out to drive for a big hit. He did make the catch, got the lost yardage back, and then about a yard on top of that, but he was hit pretty hard right away. That was Jared Dunlap out there on the end. We know he's probably one of the toughest kids on this team. Uh, he brought that one in. and Yeah, nice job of picking up about five yards there on the hook route. 
It'll set it up third down and eight from the 43-yard line. We've got a timeout as Sykeston has opened up a 26-0 lead over the Farmington Knights. Three minutes, four seconds left to go in the first half of this great American football classic ball game. We'll bring it back in third on AM 800 KRBI. The Deloge Walmart Supercenter is a proud sponsor of high school sports. They take this opportunity to wish the best of luck to all the athletes and coaches this school year. Walmart Supercenter of Deloge is very proud of local athletes. Proven records have shown that our athletes have what it takes to succeed, and they put in countless hours of practice and show true dedication to their sport. So the best of luck to all the players and coaches from Walmart Supercenter in Deloge. Save money, live better, Walmart. Another third down and long coming up for this Farmington offense, Luke. Uh, they're on their own 43-yard line facing a Sykes and defense that has bent a little bit in the passing game but certainly hasn't broken, and they've been opportunistic on the turnovers. Yeah, and Farmington just can't get anything going with the running game today, and that's pretty much had to rely on the arm of Justin Bame and and down 26 to nothing right now, that's pretty much what you're going to have to do. Sykes and D-line's been impressive with Nick Nichols, Peyton Boyd, Demonge Wilson, and Markeith Bratcher. And now on third down and eight, let's see if Farmington can't convert a first down. Bain from the shotgun with three minutes and four seconds left in the first half. He's dropping back to pass. He's got a little bit of time, but then it breaks down. Nichols is going to bring him down for the sack back at the 42. It's a loss of about a yard for Justin Bain. Nichols so good coming off that edge. And Bain was having some time to pass earlier. He's getting less and less time, it seems like, as this half goes along. Well, that seems similar to that play that he fumbled the ball on the last drive. Pretty much sent all his receivers downfield trying to clear out. See, and it looked like he intended on running the ball, and uh, Sykes just had him wrapped up that time. Fourth down and 10. Farmington's going to go with the punt here. Austin DeSoul to boot it away with two minutes, 30 seconds left in the half. Newman is back to return. He's returned one on a kickoff for a touchdown. That was the opening kickoff for 85 yards. Here's DeSoul. He's going to boot this one away. And nearly got it blocked, but this is a high end over end kick or spiraling kick. It's going to bounce out of bounds at the 21-yard line. And seeing that punt in the Edward Jones Dome, that was almost NFL level. That was a pretty good boot there from Mr. DeSoul all the way back to the 21 of Sykeston. Well, 33 from Sykeston. Uh, that kid, uh, Nick, Nick, Nick Nichols, came off the end and actually hit the punter. They threw a flag there. They're going to get rough in the punter. Uh, how about that? They've now picked up the flag. So maybe they waved that one off because they're looking like they're going to spot the ball up at the 21-yard line here. Well, if it is against Sykeson, it would be their second penalty of this game. Well, they picked it up, like you said, but I guess they felt like he tried to slow himself down and just yeah. couldn't help it. So no penalty issued there, and Sykeson will have the ball at the 21 yard line with two minutes 12 seconds left to play and for Farmington you know on defense here you can't really relax Sykeson's got that capability to drive the length of the field and get one more score before the halftime break absolutely shotgun snap gross is going to swing it underneath to Bratcher on a wide receiver screen he's going to get about three yards on the kick that's Markeith Bratcher's second catch of this ball game he's got 10 yards second down and seven we're under two minutes to play first half from the Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis. An exciting day for Farmington tonight. Football fans, players, and coaches alike. But it's quickly gone sour down 26 0. Sykes are now taking their time as they come to the line. They might be just content to go into half up by 26 points, but we'll see if they want to try to take a big shot here. Already up by four scores. There's the shotgun snap, Gross. Gross is going to keep it after a play fake. He's up across the 25 to about the 26-yard line. Gain of a couple for Kylan Gross. Well, I don't see any reason for them to take any unnecessary risks, so it looks like Sykes is pretty content just to run the clock out right now. One minute, eight seconds left to go, and you're right. They're not in any type of hurry here. They're pretty much letting that play clock wind all the way down, taking the snap and then running the football. But they are keeping Farmington spread out. Play clock down to nine seconds as here's a handoff left side. He's going to get the first down. It's Chris Word spun down at the 34-yard line. That's a gain of eight. Sykeston first down. But then a flag comes in late, so we'll see if that one's not called back. You know, if this goes against Farmington, I wouldn't be surprised to see Sykeston take a shot because then they're set up right around midfield with 
45 seconds left on the clock. They call it unsportsmanlike conduct. Now they'll call it on the Bulldogs, so they'll back them up. And now any chance we were going to have of seeing Sykes and take a shot is done. They're going 20 yards back from that spot almost to about the 20-yard line. Yeah, they're going to spot that right at the 20 with 45 seconds left. So. Well, they would still get the first down, so it doesn't put them back at third down where if that was the case, then maybe Farmington, who's got two timeouts right. left, might be inclined to use some of them, try to get the ball back, but Sykeston will have first down. They wind the clock. It's at 38 seconds, and again, it's gross on the Sykeston offense, just slowing things down. They're, we're going to go into halftime, most likely with a 26 nothing lead for the Sykeston Bulldogs. Farmington with four down linemen. Man in motion, it's Pat Gross. They'll fake the handoff to Pat Gross. Kylan Gross is going to take it, try to get the edge. He's got the edge up to the 25 and lunges forward to the 27-yard line. And that's probably going to be the last play of this first half as he stays in bounds and keeps the clock moving. That's it for the first half. 26 nothing. Sykes and Bulldogs over the Farmington Knights. And, Luke, that was just not a pretty first half at all of Farmington Knight football. Just way too many mistakes by the Farmington Knights on offense. Just not clicking again this week. And, you know, it kind of started off you know, the intensity. You know, they looked excited to be out there. And, you know, the first, the first, very first play of the game, the kickoff. I mean, Sykes and takes it back all the way to the house for a touchdown. Just not the way you wanted to see things get going for this Farmington team. And, you're right. You know, just couldn't get anything going on offense, even when the defense was playing well at times. Well, they'll take at least 18 minutes for halftime here. It's the Great American Football Classic second game of the day. Farmington and Sykeston, CMO North battle, and it's been all Sykeston 26 to nothing. Back just in time for the start of the second half on AM 800 KRI. 26 0 Sykes and Lee. Farmington set to get the football first, and here comes the kickoff. Booting it deep this time. It'll bounce at the 17 yard line and roll back all the way to the end zone. It's a touchback. Farmington football at the 20 as Evan Donovan lets that roll by. He sure does. And Farmington, uh, they got a full load of work here ahead of them. They want to try and make a comeback. Uh, pretty tall order, but you know, it starts just one snap at a time. And We'll see what kind of adjustments they made here at halftime. You know, plenty of time to do it, but man, you got to overcome four scores all the while keeping Sykeston out of the end zone. It's a tough task. We'll see if Farmington's up to it in the second half. In the second half against Jackson last week, they came out and played more effectively on offense. Hopefully that's the case today. Five wide for Farmington with the empty backfield. Trips to the left, twins to the right. From the shotgun, Justin Bain waits for the snap at the 15-yard line. Ball spotted at the 20. There's the snap and a quick hitter. They go underneath quickly on the far side, but the ball skips in there incomplete. And second and 10 coming up. Kind of like what we were talking. you got to start off maybe just three or four yards at a time to make sure you're going forward. He was going for Cameron quarter, quarter on that one. It yeah. drops incomplete. Second down and 10, 11.57 to go, third quarter. That play just took three seconds. Now it's Bain back to pass again. Again, he's got time, and he's got his man over the middle. Oh, it's Dunneman dropping another one incomplete, a little bit low. He tried to go down there on a knee and haul it in. But just off of those gloves, an incomplete. Wasn't the best throw, but it was a catchable ball for Evan Dunneman, and he couldn't reel it in. Sure was, and he was wide open. And Here you go again, Glenn. We talked about this. It's third and long, and... Just really not a payroll down for Farmington. Third down and 10 from the 20. Coulter will come back to the backfield now. He'll flank Bain to his right, to his right, two receivers to the right, two receivers to the left. Bain takes the shotgun snap, drops back to pass, steps up in the pocket, floats one deep, and it's intercepted and held on to by Sykeston back at the 49-yard line. That's Spencer Clark coming up with the pick, the defensive back. And, you know, with Bame right there, there were three white jerseys in that area. One of them came up with it. It was Spencer Clark for the pick. Yeah, that was Evan Dunham coming out of the slot, running uh, running the flag route. And, you know, that's been there before for him, but not tonight. Right there, you said three white jerseys, just really tried to force it. Not a good decision by Bame. So with a 26 nothing lead, Farmington's now turned the ball over four times. 
A fumbled snap, a fumble, and two interceptions. And now it's Kylan Gross swinging one out to his tailback, shaking and baking in the backfield. He's going to lose about five yards on this one. Good pursuit by the Farmington defense. They were ready for that little swing route pattern to the running back. He's brought down immediately. It was Chris Ward, Ward on the catch, but he loses five. Yeah, good job by Zach Grieve getting back there and breaking it up and hanging on. And, uh, you know, we've seen Farmington in the first half able to control most of them runs. Second down and long. Should that word loses seven yards on that last catch. Second down and 17 from the 44-yard line. Markeith Bratcher is split out wide to the left for Sykeson. Pat Gross in the slot to the left. Or he's in the slot to the right, actually, Pat Gross is. I think they actually had an illegal procedure after that last down when they set back a couple on offense because I think that's what they uh, that's how they lost the five yards. Either way. Second down and long for Sykeston. Here comes a man in motion, and the motion man's going to get the carry right side. He's up to the 50, bouncing off a couple of tacklers. Some equipment flies up in the air for a big hit as he gets across the 50 to the 49-yard line. Back to around the original line of scrimmage. And third down and long coming up. Big opportunity to the Farmers and defense right here. You know, if you can get a, a three and out, you know, that, that goes a long way. On the third down and nine. Here's Gross back to pass. He's going to hit Bratcher, and they had a nice little play set up to where Bratcher had blockers in front of him on a wide receiver screen, but he drops the football. Incomplete pass. Fourth down. Farmington's going to get this football back. Well, actually, we could see Sykes and go for it here. We'll see if they bring the punt team out. Looks like they will change personnel and bring out the punt team. Yeah, no reason. Can Coach Gibbs over there, no reason to give him a good field position. Uh, Farmington kind of struggling already, you know. Pin him back deep. So the ball spotted at the 49-yard line of Farmington. Punter is going to be punting it from the 35-yard line. Dustin Oaks is set to boot this one deep, and he gets off a nice one. It's a wobbler back to the 30, bobbled by Farmington at the 29-yard line, but then picked up. That was a dangerous one there. He falls on it. First down, Farmington, no harm done. There were those Kobe Moon back there. Uh, Farmington wasn't real sure. They are almost set up in like a – a too deep defense because they really weren't sure if Sykeston was really going to punt it or not. And uh, Kobe Moon underneath it was able to recover that fumble. 10.35 left to go in the third quarter. Farmington still struggling offensively. Four turnovers in this game. Two of them interceptions thrown by Bain. You know, and when Bain's had time to throw, uh, sometimes his receivers have just kind of been letting him down a little bit today. Bame from the shotgun takes the snap, and he'll hand it off to Colton Coulter. Coulter had some room originally, gets it up to the 30-yard line before he's pushed back. Only a gain of a yard, maybe two, on the carry for Colton Coulter, but that puts him back even at zero yards on the day. It's been that kind of day. Tough sledding for Colton Coulter. Next like you said, the hole was there, but, man, it just closed up so fast, and uh, you got to give credit to the big guys on the defensive line for Sykes right there, closing that hole. And it was really only a gain of one, second down and nine from the 30-yard line. Farmington will line up, twins to the left, twins to the right. Shotgun snap, Bame, straight drop back, and fires underneath Calvin Lynch on a quick hook, and he's up to the 39-yard line. Should be enough to move the chains and a Farmington to first down. Bame's first completion and six pass attempts. First down and 10 from the 40. Shotgun snap to Bain. Delayed handoff, Colton Coulter lowers his shoulder, gets across the 40 to about the 41, maybe the 42-yard line. And, you know, initially he gets about a yard upfield before the Sykes and defense just imposes around him. That defensive line, we've been singing the praises all day, and they continue to win the battle up front against Farmington's O-line. Kobe Moon's actually checked in at the, the receiver on the far side of the field. Uh, he doesn't see a lot of time at receiver. Maybe they're just trying to get somebody else in there. Second down and eight from the 42-yard line. Bame's going to roll out and try Dunlap, but it's off of his hands on the out. Incomplete pass. I uh, thought a flag might be coming in late there, but no harm, no foul. Incomplete pass. 
Nine minutes, 17 seconds remains in the third quarter in Farmington. They'll get a big play, and then they'll kind of stall for a few plays and not do much. And they'll get a big play, and then they'll turn it over. They've had trouble consistently putting together drives to get it down close to the end zone. They haven't smelled the end zone yet today. Here's a quick hitter out to the left. The ball is broken up. He was looking for, I believe, Moon on the left side, but it's incomplete. Sykes and defender comes up and breaks it up quickly. They sure did. It looks like we thought maybe for a second there Moon had a chance to haul it in, but, you know, great job by the Sykes and defender there. That was number 21. Uh, Spencer Clark coming in and breaking up that pass. Clark already has an interception in this game, and that was kind of an all-or-nothing play for him. If you know He kind of broke on the ball there, and if it gets through, Moon could have caught it and gone to the end zone, but he got there, timed it just right, and broke it up. And now on fourth down and nine, Farmington's go, going for it. And they're going to throw a deep route down the sideline, overthrown, incomplete, and again looking for Kobe Moon. Two defenders over there for Sykeson. They weren't having it. Incomplete turnover on downs. Aim led his Man Moon just a little bit too far to the sideline. He was pretty well covered anyways. Not sure if he really would have had an opportunity to make a play on that ball. So Kobe Moon comes in on that drive and quickly gets two targets, but unfortunately unable to reel either one of them in. So Sykeson takes over. They've been seemingly starting on Farmington's side of the field all day other than that first scoring drive when they started on their own 11. Twins right, twins left, shotgun formation. Kylan Gross delayed handoff to Chris Word. He's up to the 40-yard line for a gain of two. Chris Word is up to 10 carries now in the game. Man, they've been spreading out the touches. Kylan Gross, Chris Word, Pat Gross, and then through the air, Markeith Bratcher and Pat Gross have been making some plays. Second down and eight after a two-yard game. Pat Gross and Bratcher are the receivers lined up on the near side of the field from the shotgun. Four wide, Kylan Gross takes the shotgun, snap, fakes a pass left, rolls out right, and he's going to run with it, and he's going to be brought down inside the 40. His knee did drag before he kind of popped back up and got a couple extra yards, but he was down at around the 40 to maybe the 39-yard line. Yeah, that was a nice play. Almost broke containment there, but uh, number 73, big 73 there, uh, Austin Herps. Able to just kind of wrangle them in there and prevent a big play. It's going to set up third down and eight now for Sykes in at the 40 yard line. They'll line up three receivers out left, one receiver to the right. The back in the backfield is Chris Word. There's the shotgun snap, fakes a handoff to Word. Now it is gross in some trouble, rope down in the backfield, loses yardage on the play, about four yards on the loss. And that time, Farmington's defense is ready for that play. Fake Gross couldn't escape that many Farmington defenders. He was dead to rights. It was, and uh, two plays in a row there, Farmington defense. Austin Herbs first, and now Zach Grief on the other side, uh, really wrapping him up. And uh, you got to do that when you got this kid, Kylan Gross, out there. He's a playmaker. Fourth down and 11, and another pump coming for Sykes. And it's going to be Dustin Oaks and to boot it deep. Well, Farmington defense is uh, doing what they got to do in the second half. The only problem is Sykes a uh, been able to take almost half the clock, half of this third quarter away, and Farmington yet to reach the end zone, like you said. Line of scrimmage is the 43-yard line. Here comes the punt. It's Dunlap back to return. It's an end-over-end kick. Had some hang time on that one. It bounces at the 10. It's rolling towards the end zone. Sykes and trying to stop it before it gets there, all the way down to the one-yard line. Great hang time from Oaks, and then the fortuitous bounce all the way to the one. Farmington's really backed up now. They're back to the end zone. They're going to have to go 99 yards on this drive if they want to get in the end zone. 99 and a half yards. Yeah. Look, but wow, that was a heck of a punt there. And, and great coverage. Great coverage team got down there and was, you know, all around nice special teams play. Now they'll run that diamond formation now for Farmington with the four receivers lined up to the right in the diamond package and one receiver split out to the left. Bame working from the shotgun with an empty backfield with the ball spotted at their own one-yard line. So no extra protection in there. Farmington's still going to air this one out. Try to spread out the defense. Here's the shotgun snap to Bame, and Bame's going to the left side on the one-and-one -one situation. Incomplete pass, but a flag comes in. It's going to be pass interference. And that's going to give Farmington back out of the shadows of their goalpost and give them some breathing room now. I like that play call. Just take a shot on that one. You might as well. Backed up at your one-yard line. They get the pass interference call, and they'll be set up with a first down to come. 
Yeah, finally getting a break there. Like you said, just trying to make something happen. And Evan Dunovan uh, would have been a heck of a catch to make that, but picks up the pass interference call, and it's a 15-yard penalty. Yeah, and the high school game is the yardage penalty, not spot of the foul. So Farmington's got it at the 15-yard line between the 15 and the 16. And from the shotgun again, here's Bain. He's going to hit Donovan underneath. He's got it at the 21-yard line, makes a man miss, gets up to the 25, just beyond the 25-yard line for a gain right around 11 or about 10 yards on that catch. Enough to move the chains? I don't think so. Maybe just nine on the play. So nine yards to Evan Donovan. Second down and short for the Knights. Diamonds to the left with the four receivers. One receiver right. Bain from shotgun takes the snap. He's going to keep it. Up the middle he goes. First down. Holds on to the football across the 25 to about the 28-yard line. Got to keep him honest. Little quarterback design, quarterback draw there uh, just to pick up the first down. Uh, nice play call, fresh set of downs. and This Farmington offense picked up the tempo a little bit again. First down and 10. You know, we didn't see that diamond formation in the first half at all for Farmington. They've run it just about exclusively now on this drive when they were backed up at the one. From the shotgun, it's Bame again. He's going to drop back to pass. He's looking left and underthrows his target again. Incomplete. I think it was Nagel as who he was, he was going for, or Coulter, and falls incomplete. Yeah, Coulter, the back, coming out of that diamond formation. They've been running it over there. you got Cameron Quarter, Kobe Moon, Jared Dunlap. And then Coulter in that diamond, and then we got Donovan on our near side, split out, singled out by himself. Second down and 10 from their own 27-yard line. And a quick hitter on the screen out to the left side. It's caught and brought down at the 32-33 yard line for a gain of six on the far side of the field. I believe that was that was uh, Cameron Quarter on the reception there. Uh, like you said, picked up about six yards, made it a real manageable third down. Third down and four. Same thing on the other side. Oh, the ball almost intercepted. Sykeson was ready for it, jumped the route incomplete. He was going for quarter again on the other side of the formation this time. And, ooh, Sykeson almost had a pick six on that one. He sure did. And uh, Bame's got to read that and know when to make that decision. you got to be quick. Quick with your decisions, but you got to see that. you got to anticipate that defender there. Mark Jones almost had himself a pick six for Sykeson. So now fourth down coming up. They need about five yards for the first down to move the chains. Diamond formation right. One receiver out to the left. It's Donovan. They're going to try for Donovan left side. And this is going to be a nice catch if he held on to it. Yes, he did. Across the 45-yard line to the 43. That was a brilliantly thrown ball. And Donovan holds in his biggest catch of the game. That was a nice nice post route there. Donovan all out on his own there. And really just kept that defender on his outside hip and was able to make that catch. 20-yard reception to Donovan. Farmington now starting to move the football. This has been their best drive in a long time. They'll go underneath the quarter on the diamond formation on the near side of the football. He's going to get a couple yards back to the 41-yard line. The completions are starting to come, and if you can just start you know, catching the football and at least move and having something positive go your way, maybe you can get something going. And you know, Just getting a few completions in a row seems to have done Farmington wonders so far. Here's the shotgun snap. Same play to the other side of the diamond look. They'll go to quarter again, but again, not going to get much on this one. Maybe a yard on the catch for Cameron Quarter. Not really much opening up on that bubble screen, but like you said, if you can get two or three yards there, make it manageable on third down, which right now they're looking at about a seven-yard third and seven, but you know, anything besides those third and longs. Third and seven from the 40. It's Nagel, Quarter, Dunlap, and Moon in the diamond. And Donovan on the far side. Shotgun snap. Here's a pump fake. They're going to run the pump and go and go deep. Dunlap all alone, but it's overthrown. Incomplete pass. That was their best look of the day. They set that play up with the screen plays underneath. Just, you know, getting them for a yard here, yard there. Then they go with the pump and go. Dunlap all alone, but incomplete. Overthrown by Bain. Just a little bit too much on that. And uh, Dunlap dove and tried to make the catch. And just couldn't reel it in great effort so on fourth down and seven from the Sykes and 40 yard line Farmington no hesitation they're going to go for it again down 26 to zip 451 to play in the third quarter this time they'll go twins left twins right 
Bain from the shotgun with Coulter in the backfield. Drops back and has a man. It's Donovan and a nice catch. Throwing it behind him, but he has it at the 25-yard line. Donovan was wide open up the right side of the field. A first down, and that's a night there about a 14-yard reception there for Donovan. Good for a first down and two huge fourth down catches for Donovan there uh, on this drive already. We have a Sykeston injured player on the field. Farmington starting to drive the football now. Could be their big drive of the game, which is brought to you by ProCare Automotive in Von Terre. See if Farmington can't maybe get one in the end zone here and get something going. 4.45 to play. They'll tend to the Sykeston injured player. That'll give me a chance to thank Jim Roki Shelter Insurance in St. Genevieve, along with County Do It Center in St. Gen, Accent Marketing in Farmington, Donaldson Cycles in Park Hills, Fliggs Equipment in St. Genevieve, Long John Silver in Farmington. We'll take a one-minute timeout and bring it back. It's a 26 nothing lead for Sykeston over the Farmington Knights on the Great American Football Classic at the Edward Jones Dome on KREI. Innovative warehousing and distribution in Farmington is a proud supporter of high school sports and would like to wish everybody the best of luck this football season. Innovative warehousing and distribution in Farmington encourages all athletes to work hard and keep their direction. The key word to a winning team is teamwork. Good luck to all high school teams. This message brought to you by your friends at Innovative Warehousing and Distribution in Farmington. Midwest Orthopedics Group with Dr. Scott Van Ness and Dr. Christopher Sloan are orthopedic surgeons and podiatrists who offer total joint replacements, arthroscopic surgery, carpal tunnel, fracture care, workman's compensation cases, foot care, and surgery. And new patients are welcome. All surgery and care done locally in Farmington. That's Midwest Orthopedics Group, just down from Buffalo Wild Wings in the Midwest Professional Building in Farmington. Midwest Orthopedics Group. Uh, Farmington's gotten Evan Donovan involved a little bit more on this drive. He's up to 43 yards on three catches now, and he just made a pretty nice catch and a throw ball, uh, thrown ball behind him. He made the Captain D's catch of the game so far. Get more crunch for your lunch at Captain D's across from the Family Center on Highway 221 in Farmington. So that's what we wanted to see is get Donovan a little bit more involved, and it seems like whether it's you know on these underneath passes to – the other wide receivers it's setting him up downfield. Yeah, it sure is. And uh, like you said, they ran that diamond formation earlier on this drive, and, and they got their opportunity with a little pump and go. Just couldn't connect on it, but Donovan makes some huge catches, especially on fourth down on this drive. The broadcast is brought to you by Cartridge World in Farmington, along with Cozy Memorial Chapel in Farmington, Make It Personal in Farmington, and Crown Collision Center in Farmington. The injured the player for Sykeston is Jacob Stinnett. He's a team captain, defensive back, and wide receiver, 5'11", 160-pound senior. He was down for a while, but he's coming off with some help of some trainers, but he is on his feet and coming off, which is what you like to see, and hopefully he's okay. Back to the action now. First down and 10 for Farmington to the 26, a five-wide set. Trips to the left, wins to the right. Bain back to pass under some pressure. Nichols was there to bring him down, but he got rid of the ball to Moon, but Moon's going to lose about a yard on this catch. Might have been better just to let that one go incomplete. He loses two on the reception. Yeah, just a little bit thrown, underthrown there by Bain and Moon diving for the catch. Not something you think about. Oh, I just let this one drop to the ground, but in high school, when you hit the ground with the ball, you're down. Nick Nichols has done a good job from the DN spot for Sykes. And on second down and 12, Bames back to pass again. He's going to roll to his right, eyes downfield at the 30-yard line. He looks to just dump it off. He might have stepped out of bounds before he got rid of it. No, they'll say he threw it away before he stepped on the sideline. Incomplete. He was just throwing that away and nothing downfield for him to make that throw. Nice coverage in the secondary of Sykes. And then here we go, third and about 12. Again, a third down and long, Luke. It's been... It's been so tough for him today, and on this drive, they converted several third downs. They're going to need to do it again. They'll line up Twins to the left. Hopkins is out there in the slot on the left side of the formation. Twins to the right as well. Coulter the back of the backfield. Bain drops back to pass. Clean pocket again, steps up. Then he's going to run for it. He's across the 30 to the 25 to the 20. Up the sideline, pushed out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Nice run for Justin Bain. He's out at the 13 for a gain of 15 yards on the ground. Way to go, Justin Bame, seeing down the field, didn't have anything, so he took off and picked up a big block from his wide receiver, Kobe Moon, there. Probably sprung for that first down. 
Moon is lined up as the receiver split out wide right. And from the shotgun again, it's Justin Bain from the 13-yard line. There's the snap. He's rolling to his left, fires out on an out route, overthrew his man. Ooh, a big hit on the end of that. It was tipped by Hopkins before he got blasted. No flag comes out, but it was almost unnecessary the way he kind of lowered his shoulder and took out Hopkins' head on that one. But oh, he sure did. That was kind of a scary play there. Throw, ball thrown behind Hopkins, and the defender just kind of, you know, as Hopkins turned to try to make the catch, ball well past the defender really did lay it down on him. Well, Hopkins popped right up, so he's fine. No harm done. A little bit unnecessary on that blow, though, from Sykeson's defense. Second down and 10 from the 13-yard line. Four wide receivers. Twins right, twins left. Baines back to pass again. He's looking left now. He's going to scramble to his right. Dumps one up for grabs. Intercepted again. Not a well-thrown ball. Sykeson picks it off inside the five and returns it to about the six-yard line. This time it was Clay Porter, the linebacker, getting the pick. Yeah, I think what Bain wanted there, he had Donovan as he scrambled out right. I think he wanted Donovan to kind of float to the back of the end zone there. And as he's throwing it up there, uh, Donovan wasn't on the same page, and uh, Porter, the linebacker, was. He uh, picked it off. Three interceptions thrown by Bain today. Not his best performance. He's also fumbled once, and a snap has flied over his head for five of Farmington turnovers. The shutout continues for Farmington. Sykeston has it at the six-yard line in their own six, and the Bulldogs go to work with the spread offense. Oh, ball comes out on the handoff, and who came up with this one? A scramble for it. At about the seven-yard line, preliminary indications showing that Sykeston was able to fall on it, and they do keep possession. Actually gained about a half a yard on that one. Fumble in the football for four. Second down and nine from the seven now for Sykeston. We're under 320 to play in the third quarter. Boy, this has been the story of Farmington. Today, you know, a little bit of momentum on offense and then a huge turnover. Delayed handoff goes to the back word, and word going to get a couple up to about the eight-yard line before being brought down, third down, and about seven coming up for Sykeston. I mean, you take away all these turnovers and the special teams play there, that one special teams kickoff to begin the game. Looking at a two-score game, right? Basically, you know, Farmington's defense only had that, they gave up that long drive, that 88-yard yeah. drive. So, yeah, if you take away the interception that set them up at the 34-yard line, you're looking at a one-score game. Absolutely. You're right. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Farmington's five turnovers have really put them behind the eight ball today, and now we've got a timeout on the field. Two minutes, 22 seconds left in the third quarter. Sykeston wants to talk it over. A third and eight from the nine is coming up for the Sykeston Bulldogs, who lead it 26 to nothing. We're back in 30 seconds. You're listening to AM 800 KRBI. Hey, sports fans, are you excited about the upcoming season? If you're looking for your favorite team or fan apparel, you need to visit Wayne Sheets with Make It Personal on Potosi Street in Farmington. He'll show you many different styles of shirts, team jerseys, jackets, hoodies, and so much more. Whether you need jerseys for your whole team or just one for yourself, Make It Personal can help. They even do in-house dye sublimation or bling out your favorite team logo. Talk about standing out in the crowd. Hi, this is Wayne Sheets. Come see us at Make It Personal, 310 Potosi Street, 631. 1200. The Parkland Sports Voice is AM 800 KREI, Farmington Park Hills, Deloge, and the Farmington Knights trailing up in St. Louis today. 26 0 in the third quarter, two minutes, 22 seconds left to play in the third. Sykeston football after intercepting Justin Bain for the fifth time. Clay Porter, the linebacker, comes up with an interception. Two plays later, here we are on third down and eight from the nine-yard line. Farmington's defense has played pretty well today. They've been put in some bad situations and responded. It's hard to win any ball game when you turn it over five times. You're no kidding there. Sykeston football from the nine. They'll spread out the Farmington defense with four receivers. Slot man from the right comes in motion. They'll fake it to him. Here's Gross rolling out to his right. Dumps one off to a Word, but Word drops it incomplete. Kylan Gross eluding a couple of defenders there to dump that one off, but Word lets him down, drops it, punt coming up. Yeah, Word had a lot of room to run, too, uh, maybe first down. But uh, Gross looked like he was falling down as he threw it, yeah. so it was just a nice effort just to get the ball off. But Farmington defense does its job again. And we talked about Gross. We really weren't worried a whole lot about his passing attack, and he's only made a couple of big plays through the air. But really, his receivers have let him down today. He's 
you know, making, giving himself time to get some nice passes off. And if it weren't for some drops, he'd probably have a much bigger day today. Here's the punt. It's going to roll all the way down to the 49-yard line of Sykeston. And Farmington just stays away from it. So Farmington will start at the 49, right between the 48 and 49. Good field position here. Still 2.05 left in the third quarter and the whole fourth quarter, but Farmington down by four scores, 26 zip. Needing to just hold on to the ball. They drove it all the way down to the Sykeston 12 before turning it over on that last possession. Well, I think right now what I'd like to see out of Farmington is just start making some, you know, progress. And uh, let's see some good things on offense. You know, it seems like the last couple of weeks here, they've uh, just really haven't been able to go anywhere. Five wide receivers for Farmington. Here's the shotgun snap comes to Donovan. Donovan has a screen in front of him. Nice blocking convoy. He's got it up to the 40-yard line before being pushed out inside the 40 to about the 39-yard line, a yard short of the first. Little screen play. That was set up nicely. He had some blocks downfield. Sure did. And like Donovan, Evan Donovan's going to have to make some plays, and he's he's done his share. Uh, he's had a few drops this game, but he's trying everything he can to get his team back in this game. Second down and one from the 39-yard line. Five wide again, four to the left, one to the right. There's the shotgun snap, same play, other side of the formation, and it's going to be caught, and it's a first down. It's Evan Dunneman across the 40 to the 32, 33-yard line. He'll be brought down, and Dunneman making a nice catch in some traffic and get some yards after to move the chains for another Farmington first down. Nice play. Same play to the other side of the field. It worked out pretty good for him, but uh, Sykes, you know, looking ready to jump that route. Dave's going to have to be careful, uh, might be a nice opportunity to do the old pump fake and uh, go down the field. Six yards on that reception. Lynch is the lone receiver to the left side of the formation. Four receivers out right for Farmington. Three of them bunched up in the slot, and then one out wide right is Evan Donovan from the shotgun. Here's the snap to Justin Bain. Drops back to pass, has time, but then Nichols gets around his lineman and ropes him up for the sack and gets up, and he's excited about it. Nichols made short work of Zach Grief there, getting around the edge for the sack. Oh, that was a nice play by Nichols. He just came off the line so fast. And he's really, the pass protection day has been all right. That that time, uh, Nichols just made a play. Sykeson hasn't sent a whole lot at Farmington today because they've got so it's such confidence in their defensive line. Nichols has been using that swim move to perfection. He's made some plays also in the running game today, too. So... Here we go on a second down and 15. Justin Bain firing to the sideline. This ball is caught at the 21-yard line. Nice catch by Calvin Lynch going up and grabbing it. And I think he's going to be a little bit short. Of, no, they're going to move the chains and say first down, Farmington. Nice play. That was a Captain D's catch of the game right there by Calvin Lynch. Sure was. And uh, Bain, nice job rolling out, setting his feet up, and getting a nice, good, accurate throw. 16 yards on the catch there for Lynch. Moves the chains for a first down, and now they're going to hand it off to Coulter, and Coulter a yard to the 20-yard line before being popped by Clay Porter. And Coulter continues to struggle getting any kind of running room going. Second down and nine coming up for Farmington at the 20 with 25 seconds to go in the third. They'll send twins to the right, twins to the left. This could be the last play of the third third quarter on second down and nine from the 20. Bame rolling to his left, dumps one off underneath, and another big hit, a crown collision of the game as Dunlap makes a catch for a few yards, but he was stopped in his tracks, and that indeed is the last play of the third quarter. A third down and medium coming up for Farmington, 26 to nothing inside the Sykeston at 20-yard line. The Knights trail it. We're back in one minute. You're listening to AM800 Harry I. Are you ready for some football? ProCare Automotive Repair and Bon Terre is family owned and ASC and AAA approved. ProCare repairs are backed by a 12 month, 12,000 mile nationwide warranty, allowing you to drive away with confidence, not questions. Need repairs today, but more time to pay? Ask about their 6 and 12 month payment options. Find them online at ProCareForYourCar.com or call 358 1112. ProCare Automotive Repair. When it's repaired once, 
It's repaired right. By now you know that Cartridge World can fill your HP, Brother, Canon, Dell, Lexmark, and Epson laser and ink cartridges. And when they fill them, you'll always get Cartridge World's 100% satisfaction guarantee. And as they begin their fifth year in business, they say thank you to St. Francis and surrounding counties for your continued support and trust in their business. Now during this economy, doesn't it make sense to shop where you get great value and service on a product you use every day? Thanks for making Cartridge World your number one choice in saving money. That's Cartridge World in the Maple Valley Shopping Center, Farmington. Third down and seven from the 18-yard line of Sykes and Farmington still trying for that elusive first score of this ball game in the Edward Jones Dome. You'd hate to come here for the first time ever, play your first game at the Dome, and then not get in the end zone. So you want to make a score and at least get some positive confidence going your way moving forward. I don't know if you're going to be able to come back in this game or not. There is still some time if you could get some breaks, but at least get in the end zone and, and get the ball rolling. Well, we've seen Farmington make a heck of a comeback last season against Gateway Tech whenever we thought me and Chad were about ready to ride them off, and it's going to take another comeback just like that for this one. Twins right, twins left for Justin Bame on third down and seven. Shotgun snap rolls out to the right, has a blocker in front of him, but overthrows Calvin Lynch to the sideline. Incomplete fourth down coming up. I don't think any hesitation here. Looks like Farmington's going to be going for it on fourth down. Yeah, they're going to go for it now, and uh, that last play, Lynch just didn't come out of his break fast enough, and Bame just overthrew him, and I don't think Calvin was quite ready for the ball. Quarter and Dunlap lined up to the left side. It's Donovan and Lynch to the right. Shotgun again for Justin Bain with Coulter in the backfield. So the four receivers, Lynch farthest to the right, Donovan in the slot, and then on the left side, it's Dunlap in the slot and Quarter to the left. Dropping back to pass here is Bain. Pump fake, nearly sacked, steps out of it, fires over the middle. It's caught at the five, getting to the goal line, but pushed back is Evan Donovan. He won't get in the end zone, but it will be a first down. Sykeson says they stripped the football, but the play was blown dead before that. Farmington first down. Evan Donovan makes a big catch. A nice play there, and uh, way to hang on to the ball because he got swarm tackled, and way to keep driving his feet forward. Evan Donovan, nice play. Yeah, Justin Bain there almost got uh, sacked sacked and fumbled the football but stepped up and made a nice play to Donovan. Now it's Bame rolling right. He's at the five-yard line, dumps into the end zone, and the pass is caught, and it's going to be a touchdown for Farmington. They finally get on the board at the 11:37 mark in the fourth quarter. Justin Bain gets his first touchdown pass of the game. That was Evan Donovan uh, just running that little owl route. Bain giving himself plenty of time rolling out to the right. You know, nice set of plays there. Nice little series for Farmington. Getting some positive things done there. 26 to 6 is what that'll make it. 11.37 left to go. Deuce Old is on for the extra point to make it 26 to 7. The snap is there. The hold is there, but the kick goes straight into the ground. Deuce Old just got on top of that one, and uh, he's a little bit mad at himself after that. But a 26 to 6 score. 11.37 left to go. Farmington, Luke, finally gets in the end zone, and, you know, maybe that'll propel him forward in this game. Well, we can sure hope so. Uh, we hadn't seen much from him, you know, the first three quarters. You know, made a little progress on the series before this, before the big interception down there in the end zone. Uh, but it was good to see Farmington get in the end zone and put some nice plays together. And, you know, don't be surprised. Farmington maybe try an onside kick here, uh, use a little bit of that momentum. Farmington is on the board in the Edward Jones Dome, 26-6 to from the Great American Football Classic of 11.37 to play. We're back in 30 seconds on AM 800 KRBI. If you want to enter motorcycle heaven, step inside one of Donaldson Cycle's three stores. You won't be dreaming when you see no money down and as low as 3.99 financing on Yamaha machines with approved credit. You won't be dreaming when you discover you can get up to $700 customer cash or a Warren Winch when you purchase a Grizzly 450, 550, or 700 ATV. Or you learn that you can save up to $2,000 on Yamaha street bikes. Donaldson Cycles has been motorcycle riders heaven for 50 years in St. Anne, South County, or Fort Municipal Drive right here in Park Hills. Ball placed at the 40-yard line for the kickoff. We'll see if Farmington wants to try the onside here and get their offense the football back if they can recover it. Sykeson's got that hands team ready. It's a 20-point game. Farmington trails with 11.37 left to play. If you can get an onside kick, get down and score, that'll give yourself a chance to get back in this ball game. So Dussel, the onside try. It's up in the air, but fielded by, I believe, Kylan Gross there at the 49-yard line. No, it wasn't Gross. It was Dustin Oaks making the play. 
hauling that one in. And Sykeston will get it at the 49-yard line. Well, Farmington defense has been here before, uh, giving up that field position, having their backs up against the wall. They've stood the test before. They're going to have to do it one more time. How about this? This is a penalty against the Sykeston. They were lined up incorrectly on that kickoff. So they're going to move the ball up five yards to the 45, and Farmington's going to get another chance at this onside kick. That could end up being a big penalty. That could be a heck of an opportunity. They called offsides there on Sykeston on the hands team. So Farmington's going to try this again on an onside kick. This time from the 45-yard line down 20-6. to six. It's Austin DeSold who kicked that last one in the air and was hoping he could bounce it off one of those Sykeston returners to get it into Farmington's hands. It did not work. Let's see if they do it again. It's in the air. It's a little low line drive squib, and this one was even less close than the last one. Dustin Oaks fields it back at the 33-yard line. It gives Sykes in worse field position, though, and the Bulldogs will take the field on their offense. We certainly appreciate our sponsors sponsoring this broadcast, and they include Innovative Warehousing and Distribution in Farmington, Walmart Supercenter in Farmington, Taylor Funeral Service, Herbst Excavating, Hastings Unlimited, Country Financial, Phyllis Trollinger, all of Farmington. Shotgun snap. There's Gross handing it off right side, trying to get the edge and being able to is the tailback, and it's Marquez Newman with his first carry of the ball game. He's up to the 40-yard line. That'll be a gain of seven for Marquez Newman. Yeah, we know Newman's got some speed. He displayed it on that opening kickoff return, so definitely don't want to see him get on the outside. Seven-yard carry to the 40-yard line. Marquez Newman lined up in the backfield. He's replacing Chris Ward out there in the backfield. So Newman is the back. Kylan Gross sends a man in motion from left to right. Shotgun snap to Gross. Gross is going to run it to the left, and he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, after a spin move, he got back to the line, maybe even got a yard on that one, but not much on the carry. A flag did come in late on that one. We'll check it, see if Sykeston gets backed up even further. It is a hold, and it is against Sykeston. Eleven minutes, fifteen seconds left in this game. Now the Bulldogs are going to be backed up to a second down and long. You know, not out of the question to overcome a three-score deficit with this kind of time on the clock, especially if Sykeson continues to really not move the football very well against this defense. So we, you know, we see in week two that uh, the Farmington offense can get up and down the field and score some points in a hurry, and so it's not out of the question, like you said. But uh, their defense is going to have to make a stop, and uh, that clock's ticking away. Second down and 14, 11 minutes and 10 seconds and counting left to go as they wind the clock with the ball spotted back at the 29-yard line. It is Kylan Gross from the shotgun taking the snap. It's a delayed handoff, and it goes to Marquez Newman again. Newman carrying a couple of defenders right back up to the 39-yard line. A gain of about 10 there for Marquez Newman. Yeah, Newman, nice run there up the middle right off the tackle. And tell you what, picked up about all the penalty yards, so... We're going to have about the same here, but it'll be about third and five. Yeah, it'll be third down for Sykeston. Farmington's defense trying to make at least one more big play here to give their offense a chance. Ten and a half left to play. Sykeston in no hurry to get a playoff, as as it should be. Bulldogs are trying to hold on, go to 4-0, and and get another conference win today. Here's another delayed handoff. It's Marquez Newman trying to get the edge. Can they contain him? No, they can't. He's going to get the first down. He's across the 50 to the 48-yard line. Newman I think he's the fastest guy on the field right now. The way he can get to the edge, he made that look easy. Yeah, he sure did. And uh, Farmington's done actually a pretty nice job containing these out these running backs and Kylan Gross. That time they just couldn't quite get him, though. Another 10-yard carry for Newman. He's had just three carries. He's got 27 yards in this game. It's a 26-6 to six lead. Sykeston Bulldogs. Kylan Gross with a ball spotted at the 49 of Farmington is going to hand it off to Marquez Newman. A big hole up the middle. He's across the 40, lowers his shoulder and lays the boom as he gets another extra 10 yards to the 30-yard line. Make it the 29. That's a 20-yard carry for Marquez Newman. Why hasn't he been carrying the ball the whole game the way he's running? All right, tell you what, he's going to go over to the sideline now and get a breather, but 
you know, three very impressive runs right in a row for Marquez Newman. He just trucks over the Farrington defensive back there and picks up an extra 11 yards. He's a sophomore at 5'9", or 5'11", 185 pounds. He runs like he's 6'4", 220, and he's fast. Here comes the snap, and a handoff to Word, who's back in the ball game. Word's going to lower his shoulder and get up to about the 25, maybe the 24-yard line for a gain of three or four on the carry for Chris Word. Word hasn't broken off any real big gains. His biggest carry went for 11 yards, but, you know, he's he's been the workhorse today, gotten the bulk of the carries for Sykeston. He's one of those backs that can get you three, four yards a pop and just keep moving the chains for you. Hey, that's what Park Hill Central did against Maplewood yesterday. Three or four yards, keep moving the chains and running down the clock. How about those Rebels with a 7 nothing win over Maplewood Richmond Heights on their homecoming? Here's a fake handoff, and it's going to be Kylan Gross taking it to the left side. Looked like his progress had been stopped, bounced off the line, and then takes it for a first down up to the 14-yard line, about the 15-yard line before being driven down. It's another Sykes and Bulldog first down on a 10-yard carry by Gross. It looks like we're finally starting to see some fatigue set in for this Farmington defense. Yeah, now down to nine minutes to play. First and ten from the 16. Sykes and trying to drive the final nail in the coffin. The hammering has begun. Bratcher and Pat Gross will be lined up to the left. Reese Porter to the right along with Clark. One back in the backfield is Word, and the quarterback, Kyler Gross, brings his team to the line, but a flag comes in before the snap, and they're back in Sykeston up. Not a whole lot of penalties today on either side. It's been a well-played ball game that way, but Sykeston is losing the penalty battle, but they're dominating the turnover battle in this one, 5-1. to one. And, you know, Sykeston hasn't played that claim. They just happened to they fumbled a couple different times, just happened to fall right back on Yeah, Yeah, they were very fortunate in that first half that they didn't lose three or four turnovers. Here's a carry up the middle for Chris Word. Word gets it inside the 20. About the 18-yard line for another three-yard carry. I would say that's his average today, three yards in a cloud of dust or a cloud of rubber flying, out of, flying into the air here at the Edward Jones Dome. It'll be second down and 12. And from the shotgun again, Gross is going to fake the handoff, run it to his right. He's got the 15 to the 10 to the 5. He'll walk into the end zone and showboats at the end of it. Touchdown run of 18 yards for Kylan Gross after a beautiful play fake. And, man, he just skipped on into the end zone. Oh, he sure did. And, uh, hey, you know, a little showboat there at the end. You don't, you know, why not? You're in the dome, and uh, you've seen so many <laughs> of them pros do it in this the same building. Usually on the Rams, against the Rams. Yeah, I was going to uh, say, not a whole lot of the blue jerseys doing it. <laughs> yeah, but uh, hopefully, that, you know, maybe that's going to change. But anyways, uh, nice play fake by Kylan Gross there. And, uh, yeah, he's just done a nice job of controlling this offense all night long. The most impressive thing he's done today is that play fake. Farmington has been, you know, unsure who has the ball. Here's the extra point attempt. It was low, maybe partially blocked, and it ends up missing. No good. 32-6 to six is the score after that 18-yard touchdown run by Kylan Gross. It's all Sykeston at the Dome with 7.50 to play. We're back in a minute on AM800 KRBI. Walmart Supercenter in Farmington is the place to go for the best prices on all your seasonal items. You'll find a large selection of items for your vacation to that fabulous wedding, to decorating for special occasions. The friendly staff at Walmart Supercenter in Farmington, they're ready to help you find whatever you need when you need them. Walmart Supercenter in Farmington, your all-occasion connection. That's Walmart Supercenter in Farmington. Save money, live better. Walmart. In your time of need, call someone who can help. Taylor Funeral Service in Farmington. Taylor Funeral Service has served and comforted families in the area since 1973. Locally owned and operated, their licensed courteous staff is qualified to help and assist during the most trying times. Taylor Funeral Service is located at 111 East Liberty Street in downtown Farmington. Taylor Funeral Service, always there for you in your time of need. Taylor Funeral Service, a proud supporter of community events. 
Accent Marketing in Farmington is proud to be a part of the community and is committed to being a good corporate citizen and partner in the Farmington community. Accent Marketing in Farmington wish all the area athletes a great season and encourage people everywhere to attend and support area sporting and community events. Accent Marketing believes in supporting and encouraging our area youth and believes in the community in which we live. This message brought to you by your friends at Accent Marketing in Farmington. Well, it's been Sykeston's data shine at the Edward Jones Dome, 32 to 6. They lead the Farmington Knights, 7 minutes and 49 seconds left to play in the fourth quarter. Farmington's going to have the ball at their own 48 yard line after a short kickoff. And now Farmington goes to work on offense. It's done of an in motion left to right. Fake handoff to him. They'll hand it to Coulter. And guess what? He goes backwards again. It's Nichols again in on, the, on that tackle. And you look at a guy on the defensive side for Sykeston that's probably been the best playmaker. It's that DN Nichols. Oh, yeah, he's been in there all day long, and they've just been giving farmers no room to run the ball in. That running game has been pretty non-existent you know, for the better part of two weeks now. Loss of four for Coulter. He's flirting with ending this game in negative yardage again now as he's gone backwards on three different, four different occasions today. Here's a quick hitter. Oh, it's intercepted to the 40, to the 30 on the return to the 21 man to beat. It's the quarterback and he's going to beat him. Interception return for a touchdown for the Sykes and Bulldogs. That's Audrey Golden's second interception of the ball game. And he just put the final kibosh on the Farmington Knights today. 38, six. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, it didn't look like Bame and his receivers are on the same page there, but Audrey Golden, he just stepped up. He read the play all the way. And, uh, Nice play, and whew, tell you what. That's turnover number six for the Farmington Knights, and now it's going to be the fourth interception thrown by Justin Bain today. He's had one to forget. He's also lost a fumble, and then the snap that went over his head wasn't his fault. But six turnovers for Farmington, and you can see why it's a 38-6 to score. Now for the extra point, it's Dustin Oaks. Spencer Clark to hold at the 10-yard line. The snap is there. The kick is there. But again, the kick is partially blocked and goes wide. That's about the only thing Sykeson hasn't done well today is the PATs. I tell you, yeah, that's Farmington. And Farmington couldn't convert theirs either. Uh, it's just been a bad day all around for PATs. But Sykeson, you know, playing pretty well in all other aspects of the game. Kind of, I mean, really, you know, after uh, a sloppy play in the first quarter or so, uh, really haven't seen them fumble the ball or, yeah, Kylan Gross made some pretty good decisions. 38-6 the score, 7.06 to play. It's all Sykes in at the Dome. We're back in 30 seconds. You're listening to AM800 KRI. When it's time to paint, it's time to visit County Do-It Center. Whatever your painting project requires, they have it all. Their friendly staff can offer helpful, knowledgeable advice and mix custom colors to complement any decorating scheme. The new Do-It Best quality paint line is one of the fastest growing private brands in the industry. Their best look paint and primer in one carries a lifetime warranty so you know they'll stand the test of time beautifully. That's County Do-It Center in Bloomsdale and St. Genevieve. We await the ensuing kickoff after the interception return by Audrey Golden. He went about 40 yards on that pick down the sideline and outraced Justin Bain to the end zone. Extra point was no good, 38-6. to Sykes and extends their lead. Farmington on this kickoff return. They'll let it roll into the end zone. Evan Dunavan watches it go by for a touchback. Farmington will start at the 20 with 7.06 to play. And, you know, you'd like to see the backups getting in because you're dominating a ball game, but, you know, how long do you keep the starters in in a game that you're being dominated in? I mean, do you want them to stay out there and try to, you know, kind of build on things, or does it come to a point where enough is enough, you just want to take them out and get somebody else in? Yeah, yeah, there may be a – actually, it looks like the backup quarterback, uh, Foresight, is going to actually come in and play a slot receiver on this next play. You know, maybe just an opportunity to get some of these kids uh, – a chance to play in the dome. Just kind of cycle some guys through, get some guys in there, not necessarily do a full change on your offensive look, but get some guys some different looks at positions. So we've got Bain still in at quarterback. Uh, looks like Coulter's still the back of the backfield. 
And he mentioned Forsyth lined up as one of the receivers. Two receivers right, two receivers to the left for Farmington, who's now down 38-6. to six. They're going to fall to 1-3 and three after today. It'll be their second straight loss after winning week two against Trinity Catholic. And yeah, they're going to go into North County uh, next week and play a 2-2 two and two North County team. And North County's won two in a row. Here's a quick seam route up the middle. It's caught at the 35-yard line. That's Calvin Lynch, I believe, making that catch. Oh, yeah. Calvin Lynch moves the chains. First down of Farmington. That pass goes for 17 yards. Lynch has made some plays today. Four catches in the game so far for him. Here's Bain keeping it. Runs right and gets it up to the 45-yard line. Gain of eight for Justin Bain on the ground. When Farmington's been able to run the ball, it's been Bain on the quarterback keepers. And usually that's with some kind of misdirection mixed in there. When it's straight handoffs to Coulter, Sykeson's been eating it right up. Second down and two from the 45-yard line for Farmington. Bame again from shotgun. Straight drop back this time. He's under some pressure. Guess who? It was Nichols that was looking to run him down, and Bame has to just dump it off incomplete to the sideline. And we'll have third down and two. You know, a lot of people talk about uh, Kylan Gross and uh, Chris Ward on the offensive side, but really it's this Sykes and defense has been, uh, you know, stellar pretty much all season long, even when their offense wasn't really fully clicking earlier in the year. Uh, they're part of the reason this team's undefeated right now. Audrey Golden with two picks in this ball game. We've been talking about their defensive end, Nichols. Here's a handoff to Coulter, and Coulter's not going to get first down yardage as he goes to the right side. He's back to the line of scrimmage and about nothing more on the carry. You got to kind of feel for that young man. He has had just nothing going. And it's, like I said, not really his fault. Sykes and just getting the penetration into the backfield. Yeah, got to be frustrating there. And uh, like you said, almost two weeks for a Coulter, just really nowhere to go. Fourth and two from the 45. Bain tries to keep it off of a play fake this time. He's actually going to lose a yard, and it's a turnover on downs. He was brought down, tried to stretch for some extra yardage, but he loses a yard, goes backwards. Farmington turns it over. They had second and two there. And couldn't get two yards, ended up losing a yard and turns it over on downs. Yeah, just pretty much the way of things here today for Farmington. 554 and counting left to play. Looks like Kylan Gross is going to come out of this game. Sykeson's going to bring the backup in. That'd be Matt Price, a sophomore, 155 pounder. Five foot ten. So we'll see Price moving this offense. Marquez Newman gets the handoff, and Newman to the left side up to the 40 yard line. A gain of about four, but a flag on the play with 547 left. This kid Newman, I'll tell you what, he's a player and he's only a sophomore. And uh I'll tell you what, Coach Gibbs and them gotta be pretty happy about that to have that kind of a player there. No, he's gonna be around for another two years. Forty seven yards on four carries before that last play. But it's against Sykes, and so that wipes out about a four-yard gain. So 47 yards on four carries for Newman. Limited touches on offense, but he also had that kickoff return for a touchdown. And like I said, he might be the fastest guy out there. And that's saying something with all the speed that Sykes brings to the table. Twins to the left, one receiver out to the right. Price is going to take the shotgun snap, hand it off to Newman. He's tripped up in the backfield. Nice stop there by the Farmington defender. Well, it's kind of hard to tell if you really got tripped up or if he just lost his footing, but either way. I think it was Sam Reed who was there for Farmington. Yeah, 55. might have been. But, boy, he was heading for that corner, and we've seen what he can do when he gets to the outside. But you're right. He either lost his footing or Reed got a hand on his leg there to kind of trip him up, but he lost yards on the play. We've got second down and 20 now for the Sykes and Bulldogs. They've gone backwards after a penalty and then lost five on that one from Newman. There's a carry left side. Not much doing on this one. Setting up a third down and long gain of about a yard. Boy, this loss is going to drop Farmington to 0-2 in the SEMO North Conference. That's and put Sykeson right up there with Jackson is undefeated. And in that conference, you, you get behind early. It's hard to kind of climb your way back with the, the teams and that thing. Sykeson and Jackson seem to be the top dogs right now, but Cape Central is looking to be, you know, pretty solid again this year. And then Papa Bluff and Farmington really kind of battling out uh, at the bottom right now. But Papa Bluff's not a team that you can really shake your head at. They're they're doing some nice things this year too. 
Here's the delayed handoff again. This one goes to Marquez Newman again. He'll try the right side, get it up about the 48-yard line, just a gain of about a yard for Marquez Newman as we're just going through the motions here. Sykes are trying to run out as much clock as they can. They will give the ball back to Farmington on a punt. Fourth down and 16 from the 50. Oaks is in the punt. Farmington back to return. Definitely been a frustrating couple of weeks here for Farmington football. I think uh, the coaches and the players know that they've got a better product than what they've been putting out on the field. And, you know, here four games into the season, you kind of hope to have those kind of things figured out. Still got a couple, you know, still got several games left to get there. But you really want to start getting it together pretty quick, I think, Glenn. Well, with the substitutions coming in for Sykes and they got too many men on the field, they'll back them up on the penalty. So a fourth down at 16 becomes a fourth down at 21 for the 45-yard line. Sykes is still set to punt this one away. Farmington at North County next week right here on AM800 KREI. Here is the punt. It's a spiraling drive that sends the returner back to the 25-yard line. He'll get about three to four yards on the return. That's Chris Smith on that kick return, punt return there for Farmington. Yeah, it looks like Farmington's going to try and get Get a couple of younger kids in, maybe give them the opportunity to play out on the field. Yeah, and I, I like that decision. You know, at this point, 38-6, to six, really not a whole lot left to prove with the starters in there. Get, you know, get everybody else a chance to play on the dome or play in the dome on this turf. So we'll see some new faces in there for Farmington in all likelihood on well, offense. Yeah, the Farmington baseball team actually got to play up at Bush Stadium a couple of years yeah. back. And uh, Coach Gibbs, the coach Gibbs for Farmington is actually the Farmington head baseball coach. And uh, I remember him saying, you know, back then it wasn't more so about who won the game. Of course, you get so many more games in baseball than you do in football. It wasn't so much about who won the game, but, you know, giving the kids the opportunity to play in something special like that. I believe Farmington ended up winning that one anyway, didn't they? Yeah, I think so. Here's Sykeson now. Did, how did Sykeson just get this ball back? Did, was there a fumble there? Farmington had returned that punt, but Sykeston has it at the 40-yard line. Maybe we're just so high up here. The oxygen is just <laughs> thinning out. We can't really – we don't know what's going on. I don't, I don't I can't even tell you what happened there. All of a sudden, Sykeston had the ball, I'm guessing. I mean, Chris Smith had that punt return, got about four yards on it. Maybe he coughed the football up, and we didn't even notice it. Well, I think – well, must have. There must have been some kind of uh, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on Yeah, Farmington. you're right, because they spotted at the 40 – and Smith was tackled at the 30. So, yeah, it must have just been a first down on a penalty. Sykes in football, nonetheless, with under three minutes to play. Not that it really matters a whole lot with the score the way it is. 38-6. to six. Hand off right side. Mm, couple yards. Third down coming up. But anyway, Farmington North County next week. And, you know, that was a game that you're looking at on the schedule the past few years. Farmington's been dominating it. North County started 0-2 this year. And, you're thinking, man, North County might have a tough time with Farmington again this year. Well, Farmington's out to a one and three start, so this is setting up a, a pretty crucial game next week against North County. Farmington trying to get back on track. North County will be trying to extend a two-game winning streak. Well, I, I can guarantee you that you know those fans over there in North County and Bonterre and Deloge, they're ready for Farmington, and uh, that's always a game they get jacked up for. And, uh, I think that team's going to be excited to play. You know, Farmington right now a little bit down and. I think they're, they'll be excited for this matchup. Marquez Newman just got 18 yards on the ground, handing off left tackle. First down inside the 20 for Sykes. And Marquez Newman was burning the Farmington starters. Now he's in there against the Farmington backups, and he's starting to have a field day. We'll be under two minutes to play by the time this next one is snapped. So that's the game of the week on AM 800 KRI. There's a couple other good games going on around the area next week. We'll get to those here in just a sec. Here's a quarterback keeper, maybe a yard on the carry up to around the 18-yard line. The J98 game of the week is set for Potosi-Fredericktown. That's a big white division battle in the uh, MF MAFC. But there's also another big game in that uh, conference going on between St. Genevieve and Central. And we can only cover one of them on J98. Those are two uh, premier games next week. One's going to be the J98 live game. The other one's going to be the update game. We'll see which one. But uh, those are two big games. Those are this huge lineup. And uh, Park Hill's a big win 
or yesterday in uh, St. Jimmy, a big win as well, but uh, really sets up a pretty nice matchup for next week, uh, both games, really. A minute 10 left to go in this ball game. Sykes and just trying to run off the clock. Here's our handoff right side. Dustin Oaks with a nice carry up inside the 10 to the 7-yard line. 11 yards for Dustin Oaks. We've seen him as the kicker and punter today. He gets some looks on offense and sets up Sykeston with another scoring chance late, late in the ball game. Yeah, and hey, can't blame Sykes for running up the score. They're just handing it off, and it's up to Farmington to stop them. And especially with the backups in there, so you want them to run the offense because it's going to be them here in a year or two out here running the plays. Kent Gibbs wants to see what he has. With a minute four left from the shotgun. Here comes a flag. One thing you will see with the backups, though, is a lot more of that, you know, procedure penalties, things like that, because they're just kind of learning, trying to get out there, learning on the fly, and they, they get lined up wrong, get, or, you know, false start here, false start there, something like that. They'll little, be backed up five yards. A little bit of nerves out there playing uh, playing in the varsity when you're used to only playing in JV. By the way, you're listening to AM800 KRI, Farmington Park Hills, Deloge. It's the Great American Football Classic. Not so great for Farmington today, losing 38-6. to six. Could be worse. They could actually fall by another score here if they can't stop Farmington or if they can't stop Sykeston. It's looking like the Bulldogs might just take a knee here and let the clock run out. Well, lined up under center, the backup quarterback. Actually, this is the third string quarterback. Taking the snap, taking a knee. And we're down to 40 seconds to play. One more kneel down should do it. And Sykeson will get out of here with a 38-6 to win. You know, the Bulldogs look to be the real deal, Luke. I mean, you know, Farmington, they haven't played well the past couple of weeks, but they've run up against some pretty good competition, they too. They sure have two good teams here in Sykeson, number six in the, the state for me right now, and probably going to move up because I know at least two teams that were ahead of them in the rankings lost this past weekend. So uh, Sykeson Bulldogs, you know, keep your, keep your eye on them and, you know, Farmington uh, probably going to fall down to at least seventh in the district standing so far. And, uh, you know, there's a chance these two teams might meet again. Last kneel down, and that did it. 38-6, to six, final score. Sykes and Bulldogs all over the Farmington Knights today. It was really never close. As close as Farmington could get was 26-6. to six. But a couple of more scores for the Bulldogs, and they win it 38-6. to six. They'll go to 4-0. and oh. Farmington moves to 1-3 and three on the year setting up an important game against North County next week on AM800 at KREI.